Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 2, Episode 31. Happy Turkey Day, Dumpster Dwellers. We're here again with our Thanks Garbage episode, and uh, we got something good for you. Probably the best... I, it's definitely not the only, but it's definitely the best uh, Thanksgiving slasher. It's a lot better than uh, Home Sweet Home. Well, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking Blood Rage from 1987, directed by John Grismer. I'm Joel Scola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor. Despite all my blood rage, I am still just a McClunky in a cage. McGraw. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the dumpster. Looks like you're going to get a chance to meet the rest of the family. My psychotic brother just escaped. Pass the green beans, please. I don't know, Connor. <sighs> You're making me want to unpack that, but I kind of don't want to <laughs> unpack that. <laughs> Um, mostly just because I hadn't made a joke about that stupid Greedo change yet, and, uh, uh, trying to come up with something for this movie. Um, I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan, and I don't give a fuck. (laughs) I don't care. Like, that's the least of my problems. It's kind of at that point where Lucas is just like, how many different ways can I fuck with this scene to get people's blood boiling and, and, and every time every time yeah it's just like it's that scene in particular has been pushed through so many filters at this point I go back and watch her I'm like just you know what add flying monkeys do whatever just add a bunch of shit well, who could give a shit you think George just sits there like fucking Mr. Burns with his fingers crossed just like eh it's been about 10 years since I fucked with uh, the Greedo scene how much more can I change this one scene <laughs> <laughs> it's been 25 years. Yeah, it's been 20. <laughs> Unfortunately, it hasn't been that long. Hey, uh, you think we should, you know, fix that Greedo scene, or what do you think? Do it again? George, enough. <laughs> what, what, how do you feel about them shooting each other at the same time, and then they both die, and the movie's over? What do you think? What, what, what if Han Solo had, like, a target behind him, and that's what Greedo is <laughs> actually trying to shoot at? Someone walks out and hands him a fucking stuffed animal. Yeah. <laughs> Hooray, he gets shot. What if one of those uh, door those door m- machine things from the Jabba's Palace pops out and he shoots that? Whatever the fuck it says. Okay, so Han was actually aiming at a rancor that was going to eat Greedo's head, but it turns out he was high on PCP, but we're not going to explain that to the audience. Han shot into the future to kill the rancor that was trying to eat Luke. What? Did, didn't he, like, shoot through the table at one point? Well, I know his head, t- like, totally changes uh, position on one version. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think in the original cut, I'm pretty sure he shoots into the table. Yeah, that's all you need. That's it. Why? Because. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. Blood rage. Anyway, we're talking about a Thanksgiving horror film today, not fucking McClunky Greedo McFuckpants. <laughs> uh, so, are there just two Thanksgiving slasher films? Is that it? Have we watched them all? I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, well, what's uh, Thanksgiving? C.B. Smith keeps telling me about this movie, and I still haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, but isn't that a isn't that like a killer turkey? That doesn't count. Right? It's like a forty. Okay. It's a forty-five minute long movie about a killer hand puppet. All right. Yeah. It's fun, but that's what it is. I, we've seen a few of those, so I I wouldn't knock it, man. Yeah. There's one other film that I watch at the same time when I watch Home Sweet Home. Or well, 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 Home Sweet Home has been added to my repertoire since last year. But uh, I would always watch Blood Rage and The Mutilator, aka Fall Break. Um. I you know I watch that around this time too because it's a fall slasher movie so it kind of you know it's kind of in the pocket there but it doesn't take place on Thanksgiving or have anything to do with Thanksgiving. Wait, the alternate title for the Mutilator is Fall Break. Yep, going on a, a fall break. That's terrible. I'm so glad Dude, I'm stuck with the Mutilator. There's a theme song. Called Fall Break in the movie. Uh, it's great, yeah, dude. I don't, I don't want it. Uh, it's worth it just to look it up. We're going on now. A fall break, walking hand in hand in the moonlight. I deny it. Uh, you're crazy because that movie rules. Oh, no, no, I'm denying the alternate title. I like the mutilator. Uh, technically, there are two. There's Home Sweet Home, which we did last year, and then this one, uh, Blood Rage. 
aka Slasher, aka Nightmare at Shadow. The, the Terror at Shadow Woods? What the, oh, Nightmare at Shadow, Shadow Woods, which is a terrible title, and I'm glad they didn't use that because... Well, you know, Shadow Woods, man, that's the name of the apartment complex that this film takes place in. Yeah. Is it even? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't notice that. Like, I wasn't looking for it at all. There's a big sign. We'll get to it. So the original title was Slasher. And this film was made in 1983 and didn't get released till 1987. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, That's a crime. I think um, it was out for only a few months. And then they changed. What? Yeah, they changed the name to Nightmare in Shadow Woods from Blood Rage. So it went from Slasher to Blood Rage to Nightmare in Shadow Woods. Okay. Connor had mentioned this. So, okay, so right out of the gate, uh, we all watched the the uncut original format of this film with the slasher title, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. And that has all, everything's restored to it. There's every scene, every gore uh, scene, everything's intact, right? Um, so on my prison, prism tape, I was reading that uh, there is one, like all the gore is intact on the prism uh, VHS, but there's one scene that they add that's not in uh, Nightmare nightmare at shadow woods and that's the intro where like todd is in the mental hospital and then alternatively in nightmare and shadow woods which is quote unquote the tv cut or like however you want to do that the one that was shown on cable or whatever um that has all the gore stripped out of it and then i believe that intro scene with todd in the hospital is not there and then there's an additional uh, pool scene at the end of that that's not in the prism tape. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. So there's your alternate cuts for you. But the one we watched has all of it. Good old alternate slasher cuts from the 80s. That's what I always liked about the, the 80s cuts though, right? Like when you found out that there was an alternate cut or some shit or some type, some some of the gore was cut out or like, oh shit, man, is that the unrated tape or is that yeah. the R-rated tape? Then you're like, I need it. Because the mutilator had that too. Uh, Vestron had put out two versions of the fucking film. Uh, uh, like a, There's one with like a blue case that's the R-rated version and then the all black case is the unrated version of the... Oh, you know who did something like that? Stay Alive did that. Uh. Uh, you know, horror movie classic from the 2000s. God damn it! They had the red. They had the red DVD and they had the blue DVD. I will say the unrated version of Stay Alive is the only way to watch that movie. Uh, we've mentioned it a few times on this show. To to Joe's chagrin, is there any good way to watch that film? I don't think so. It's been about ten years, but I still got the DVD on display. So <laughs> I hope so. Yes, yes, through a through a significantly cross faded filter. <laughs> Great, you know it's coming for season three, so fucking get ready for that shit. Oh, I'm I am stupid excited to watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that movie is ridiculous, and I love it. I'm gonna bathe in a bunch of virgin blood to prepare for that film. Yeah, My Bloody Valentine alternate cut, but that was the one that was hard to find because that didn't come out for a long time. That was the footage that Paramount was holding hostage. I'm sorry, everybody. Right, and when that DVD came out, um, they restored it all, but they didn't like clean the footage up they were just like okay oh it's gross looking yeah it's just like here's the fucking footage we found in our fucking garbage can here you go but it was in intact right yeah and it's unlike the uh like the friday 7 footage that was excised you can find in some parts of the internet but it is it's not even worth attempting to restore that footage is fucked yeah uh, unfortunately. Not as fucked as the Event Horizon uh, footage that was left oh, in that salt mine in Transylvania. <laughs> but still fucked. <laughs> but I'm psyched about uh, My Bloody Valentine because uh, Shout Factory, I believe, is putting out a fully uh, restored, uncut version of My Bloody Valentine, like, for the first time ever on Blu-ray this year. Good, because that's my favorite slasher film ever, so I need that. I'm so fucking hyped for that, dude. Uh, but yeah, back to the Prowler real quick. Um, I was in, uh, Julie and I went to Cape May to go see a, um, the onset cinema from, um, the Myers house and see, uh, the guy, um, Benny who runs that, uh, did a showing of the Prowler in Cape May with, um, Vicky Dawson on set, the, the main final girl. Uh, so I got to go to the, uh, the inn in Cape May and watch the fucking Prowler and meet Vicky Dawson, and I dressed up in my Prowler costume? <laughs> I knew that was you. You, pop, you popped up in someone else's fucking picture on my Facebook feed, and I was like, oh, if you only knew. Uh, I had a fucking blast, man. Uh, my buddy Chris uh, Garofalo was there. 
uh, from Quilt Phase Studios, who does all um, he does he does posters for a lot of events, and he did a really cool one for for the event too. They had the fucking cake uh, from from the graduating class of uh, it was so fucking cool, man. And we watched it in there and stuff. It was it was really neat. Um, but speaking of that. We're just gonna get it. We're, I just want to get into some 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 details of this before we get into the meat and potatoes of this film. Um, but ah, but <laughs> but don't <laughs> get it. I wasn't gonna go in on that one. McConnor laughed. Yeah, so. and there you Thanksgiving go. Thanksgiving jokes, guys. <laughs> so on the note of the Prowler, Richard Einhorn, who did who does the uh, soundtrack for this film, dude, he's he did Shockwaves. Don't Go in the House, which was just released by Waxwork, which I still need to pick up because it's fucking great. He did The Prowler and he did some Tales from the Dark Side episodes. And this fucking score for this film kicks so much ass and he's done so many good tracks for other these other films. I mean, it, I mean, he's just great. The score for this movie is probably my favorite thing about it because <laughs> the entire time I was like... This just sounds like a guy who's blasted on MDMA, just like with his tongue out, <laughs> slamming a synthesizer the whole time. Like, Wah! dude, it fucking rules, man. It sets so much energy. At some points, in like the score has more energy than the film does. I mean, it's peak '80s, man, with the music. Oh yeah. It also kind of reminded me of the Day of the Dead score, just with uh, the far more electricity to it. Kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I could see that. That whole do 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 kind of beat. Um, and speaking of gore and cuts and uncut things, we got Ed French on effects on this film. Do you fe- do you fellas know who that guy is? I don't nah. know that name. Okay, all right. Ed French is fucking amazing. Um, he's he like one of his first films was Nightmares in a Damaged Brain, which is awesome. If you've never seen that, it's also called Nightmare. If you've never seen that, go find a copy of it because it's amazing. That popped up on all the old slasher sites that I would go to to find this stuff. So I've never seen it, but I know of it. Dude, do yourself a favor. It's really good. Uh, Sleepaway Camp, he did. Chud. Exterminator 2. Oh, so now I have a target for that childhood trauma of the ending (laughs) of that movie. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Sleepaway Camp. The fuck? Uh, The Stuff. Creepshow 2. Uh, he did tales, some Tales from the Dark Side episodes, Rejuvenator, which is really good, a uh, good 80s flick. Uh, fucking Terminator 2 he worked on. Ooh. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the series. Uh, he also did uh, <clears throat> Terminator Salvation. He worked on that as well. Holy shit. Nice. Yeah. Movie Dumpster Season 2, Episode 30. It's like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. I mean, it could be. We just got to jump in that fucking time machine. Yeah, right, other me? Which, which kind are we talking to? The bag of bones or the the flesh puddle? Oh yeah, this is this is the bag of bones. I thought he was asleep on my couch. Uh, speed force, whatever. I can oh, be yeah. in two places. It's a speed mirage. This is right. This he's is like Doctor Manhattan. He's he's everywhere and nowhere. Yes. <laughs> Connor has ascended. I'm a skeletal <laughs> god. <laughs> Take away my presence now, Whipple. <laughs> Just start fucking shooting lasers out of your eyes. Yeah. Omega rays. Come try to ruin my Christmas now, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm coming for you, mother. Fuck. Uh, he also, Ed French also did a favorite of ours here, uh, Venom. Good old Ray. <sighs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Well, the effects were pretty cool in that film. Too bad that movie yeah. sucks. Yeah. You, you couldn't come up with a, a better example of, like, how much slasher movies have started to suck in the last few decades than Venom. It's just, like, so yeah. lethargic and not fun. I know, right? Whereas this movie is out of its mind from start to fucking finish. And it doesn't give a fuck. It's just like, yep, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and I'm eating it up, dude. Um, just to cap that off, Ed also is still he's still working and he's he's working on Preacher and Westworld. Uh, just to give you some update, some you know some recent work he's been doing. Preacher is a good show. Never saw it. Kind of want to see it. It's really good. I believe God is portrayed as a man in a cow costume who rides a motorcycle. <laughs> it's Arnold. <laughs> Yeah, right. Which is the fucking uh, with, with the cow ears. Yeah, man. Fucking the, the fucking T nine hundred. The C nine hundred. Oh my god! <laughs> He's just got those udders on the front <laughs> of his stomach. He shoots fucking liquid metal out of his udders. Oh my god! He's like the ultimate Terminator hunting machine. <laughs> But he's a cow or whatever. Why is he a cow? Skynet's like, why the fuck wouldn't he be? Shut up. Don't ask us anything. Skynet thought he was unsuspecting as a cow. (laughs) On a motorcycle. (laughs) (laughs) He'll blend into human society. They love cows. There was like a glitch and it got fucked up and they were like, yeah, well, you know, cows are unsuspecting. 
so we'll put him on a motorcycle. This was this this was like the fuck you that Skynet sent back after they were about to be just like totally nuked out of existence. Like, ah, eh, what do we got left to send back? We got a cow. Ah, eh, <laughs> we're dead anyway. Who cares? Send it. <laughs> fuck it. Here we go. Uh, I mean, that's how you get Planet of the Apes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, or the cow level in Diablo too. Take your pick. <laughs> so, so yeah, Blood Rage. Uh, so. Man, right out of the fucking gate, dude. We 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 open up on this drive-in movie theater. You want to uh, crunch this this paper thin plot real fast? Oh real, yeah, yeah, real, yeah. Real fast, real fast. I can talk. Oh, I'm gonna fist the shit out of this. You ready? <laughs> uh, so there. There's a pair of twins. One is crazy for reasons. <laughs> this this might actually be a case where I feel like crunching it isn't even necessary. I feel like we're going to get into this so quickly that it's just going to kind of like sell itself. Yeah, it's set up right away. I mean, they don't even waste any time. They're just like, yep, here's this, here's this, that's it, go. There's twins, one is crazy, he frames the other one, and there you go. So basically, as small children, uh, there's these twins, Terry and Todd, and uh, Terry clearly has something wrong with him and uh, frames his brother for murder. And uh, his brother can't defend himself because he's so speechless at, w- speechless at what he just witnessed that he's putting in an asylum for fucking 10 years. And uh, as his doctor finally starts to realize that he's innocent, word gets back to Terry and the grieving mother. And uh, Terry relapses after years of not really having any issues and just goes on a fucking killing spree and tries blaming his escaped uh, mental asylum brother. And that's kind of the flick. Yeah, pretty much. Um, And it's 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 pretty it's pretty clear cut, especially when you're watching it. Like I said, like we, we jump right into it. It's like, okay, here's the fucking score. Here you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no really mystery or anything. I mean, um. And that's kind of not what this film is about, I would say. No, yeah, they're not, they're not trying to cover anything up. No, they're not trying to cover everything up, but there are some serious fucking family issues that I want to talk about and favoritism and all that kind of shit because it's rife. I was getting some fucking heredity vibes. Ooh, I like that comparison. Uh, but the movie opens up with a bunch of people at a drive through theater and this fucking soundtrack is just pumping and people are getting popcorn and getting in their cars Dude, it ki- it kicks right the fuck up. We get we like dig right into a fucking big bucket of popcorn and fucking bam. Charnitsky's there with the fuck <laughs> the fucking chunky chicken in one car. Gunner's sitting there next to him hitting a peace pipe. Hey, can you shut up? I'm trying to watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It's his big scene. <laughs> <laughs> Pee Wee's walking around with the fucking popcorn talking to people. <laughs> Uh, did did any of you did either of you guys catch a little cameo here? Ted Raimi? Oh yeah, y- yeah. Fucking yeah. J- how do you miss that face? Like <laughs> the condom. He's the condom guy. I actually I actually had to get up and do something and hit pause on my computer and it froze at his face. I was like, oh hey Ted, I just <laughs> I just kind of walked away and got some water. <laughs> he's just there hanging out. Selling condoms in the bathroom. Fuck it. This fucking bro guy is just like, yeah, what are you selling? And he opens up his fucking trench coat, and he's got like 12 different types of condoms. He's like, I like a guy with choices. Only in horror films would you find a condom salesman. Dude, this is a drive-in, man. People are getting busy at these fucking things. I guess so. Oh, I'm sure this place smells like sex. Like, I'm sure it's gross. Ew. And here we have this fucking... She's not even middle-aged. She's old. This old woman... (laughs) <laughs> having <laughs> sex with her fucking boyfriend in this car while the twins sleep in the back? Question mark? Well, it never gets that far, but this guy is, like, really fucking pushy. Right, they're, they're, they're asleep in the back. They're asleep. And she's like, I don't know. I want to see your tits. There's there's, <gasps> there's there's a series of parental decisions in this movie that should be absolutely just throttled, and this is the first one. Oh, yeah. Louise Lasser, by the way, playing Maddie in this. Um, yes. She's, um, you know, everybody might know her uh, as Mary Hartman from Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Um, but she was she was on the Bob Newhart show. She was on the Mary Tyler Moore show. She fucking uh, she was she was like the guest host on Saturday Night Live, like in the seventies. Like it, it, I don't know. She's done a lot. Of, she did a lot of shit. Um, I will and, say this about her: she is the fucking lifeblood of this movie, man. Um, and her performance w- like reminded me of how much. Um, her name is escaping me right now, but I should know it. Pamela Voorhees lights up the first Friday as soon as she shows up because you're like, that performance is startling. Betsy Palmer. 
Yeah, there we go. Yeah, right, she's, right, right. she's like my favorite part about the first Friday because her performance is, starts out as very tender and then just becomes unhinged. Um, and in this case, uh, well, what, especially what, since in that case the audience pretty much knows right from the get go that she's the killer when she appears on the screen, and that the, the the final girl doesn't. Yeah, and in this case, Lasser is from the moment you see her, you're like you're like ah, you're not put together very well. <laughs> no. <laughs> She plays it great. Yeah. Uh, just, just real quick before we get into it, a uh, little Easter egg in the beginning of this film where, where they come up to the fucking drive-in. The movie that's playing was actually this director's first film, The Fucking Bride. That he Well, he wrote the he wrote the bride, but it goes under a different name called The House That Cried Murder, and that's what's playing at the uh, theater. <laughs> that sounds like a Troy McClure movie. The House That Cried Murder. <laughs> Mom's trying to get busy well mom's no not trying to get busy in the front seat her hawaiian shirted boyfriend is <laughs> well the, dude i was getting some fucking serious like sarah goldfarb vibes from this woman yeah yeah a little bit she's like ellen burston in fucking requiem for a dream dude mm, yeah um while this is happening her boy's not asleep get up and just wander away uh well, well key point key point uh I forget if it's Todd or Terry because they're so they're identical twins. Yeah. And especially in the beginning, it's hard to t- pick them apart. But one of them's like, "Up, oh, mom's at it again." Yeah, she's going down on that dude again. Let's get out of here and get some popcorn or whatever. Mom's got her boyfriend of the week again. Because there's some kind of implication here that when the one kid Terry uh, sees his mother, you know getting affection from another man, he kind of gets, like, set off. Yeah, there is some creepy-ass, I love yeah. my son a little too much vibes. Yeah, and he's uh, he's terrible at hiding it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they sneak off, and for so- they, they find a, uh, a, a hatchet on someone's truck, right, or something like that? Yeah, like a work truck. Yeah. yeah. And uh, dude who was getting the popcorn before that fucking bought the condoms... <laughs> Is fucking in the back. (laughs) He's fucking in the back of this car. Well, you know he had his dick in the bottom of the popcorn. That's what started this all. Oh, man, he did the popcorn trick? That's what happened. Gets him every time, right? And he paid for it. I also like how those two are having sex very loudly and they're quite naked in like the front seat. Like, <laughs> dude, let me tell you something. We're panning like right before this, we're panning around the fucking drive-in and people are just like fucking on cars in the back of cars. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. It must reek at that place. Like it just, it's probably just stinks like sweat. You just pull up, you're like, oh my God. They show this like middle-aged couple and the one guy's like trying to like kiss his girlfriend. And she's like so into the movie. She keeps fucking pushing him off to the side and he's like, oh fuck. It's all well lit and people are fucking sucking and fucking all over this place. (laughs) It's hilarious. Um, So, yeah. So, Terry's like peeping in this fucking window at this guy fucking this chick. And he's like, and the guy looks up. He's like, hey, get out of here, you little pervert or whatever. And then Terry takes a fucking hatchet that he found (laughs) and just whacks this dude right in in his fucking eye with it. Dude. (laughs) I audibly like very audibly i made some kind of vocalization i don't know what it was because i wasn't my guard was down and we're like three minutes into the film and i wasn't ready for any of this i was like oh <laughs> we're not fucking around dude it the, the fucking red comes the cranberry sauce comes it comes early this year he hits him like four times right next to the eye he jason Voorhees is him like he does the whole tommy jarvis thing he just keeps hitting him in the side of the fucking head over and over and this guy's girlfriend gets out of the car i think i think honestly as well as you are putting that i think you're not painting enough of a picture yeah because they straight up show how brutal this oh, fucking be you're, oh, you're yeah. not seeing him swing this and it cuts away and there's an accident no this thing's coming towards his face hitting him implanting there for like a second or two and then coming out and there's just like blood gushing out of these like gaping lashes on this yeah, guy's poor face he's got these giant cracks in the side <laughs> of his head there's a point where like his he like droops down onto the chick and starts bleeding on her and he push she pushes his head back up and then he gets gets whacked again in the face with the fucking axe. It's like, oh my god. It's I didn't great. See that. It's so good. Ew, don't bleed on me. 
Yeah, like, she's just, like, freaked out, and, he, yep, batter up, motherfuck. It's on the brutality level of the end of Casino when Pesci gets hit with the fucking baseball bat repeatedly. It's, like, that <laughs> yeah. level of fucked up. And and just as comical. I, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I, whatever you say, Connor. I mean, it had I mean, me it had me giggling, but, it, you know, it's fucked up because it's yeah. done so well. I was like, that's amazing. Right. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this guy's girlfriend just, like, there's a cut, and she's just running off into the night stark naked. <laughs> oh, yeah, that fucking bare ass is listening <laughs> and she was never seen again nope some say she's still running in those <laughs> you can hear her ass cheeks clap if you listen real hard yeah ah! um and then i love oh my god you didn't have to but you did um <laughs> um granny van damme is off for someone going yeah! that's her origins man that's her origins that's her <laughs> Set something off in her synapse after that. Oh, oh my God, GVD Origins. She was fucking it at at the drive-in. Well, yeah, that she's running. She's in the woods. She's hiding. She, you know, she lives out there as like a hermit for a while. Trips, breaks her legs, gets the wheelchair. Exactly. She works with steel for a little while. There you builds go. that fucking weaponized wheelchair, and then she ends up with the Van Dams. It, it makes sense <sighs> to me. Man, that makes sense, right? She's been so she's been dealing with fucked up kids her whole life. Yeah, she yeah. was one. Yeah, she was. I guess. Yeah. Hence her fascination with nudity. She was nude when this all happened. <laughs> it's a natural, the way things go. Get naked. I remember that night my ass was glistening like the moon. Take a good look, because there it goes. Oh, man. So uh, they, they, they fucking murdered this guy properly. And then it's I love they. this. It's not just, they. It's just, it's just Terry. Yeah, he, Terry. Yeah, Terry murders this dude very effectively. And then as he finishes, I love the way this is shot, because... It just looks funny. Uh, he's got the hatchet, turns around, puts it in Todd's hands, and just wipes blood all over him. And but but at this point, like fifteen people are looking directly at them. Well, no, they don't come up until after he does this. He hands it to Todd and wipes like the hand the bloody handprints on Todd's face, and then everyone starts walking up because Terry yells, yeah. "Help! My brother attacked this man! Help!" <laughs> yeah, he starts screaming. Oh, it just it looked to me like there was people already kind of ascending onto no, the, the scene. No, the okay. kid's a fucking psychopath. He murders this guy and pins it on his brother, who's shell shot and can't respond. Mom, he hurt the guy. Yeah, he did more than hurt him. Yeah, he's dead. Um, so flash forward uh, to the psychiatric hospital where Todd, the, the poor kid who didn't kill that man, <laughs> is uh, has been locked up for the past 10 years? Yeah. But at like a Friday 5 halfway home kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, we, we got some Tommy Jarvis going on here. Yeah, it's it's less of like, if they say institute, but it seems like a home. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's just, you don't see a lot of it, but it seems kind of, um, it seems more cozy than what I imagine a mental institute to be. It's um, like a 70s library. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's what it looks like. <laughs> the mother, Maddie, she's going to check up on him every year. I guess she goes for Thanksgiving, and she brings him a fucking slice of pumpkin pie in a box. Here's your pumpkin pie, Harry. Did you get the <laughs> television? Or what? <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, you have this Dr. Loomis fucking stand in, this Dr. Bernard, um, and she's she's basically giving voiceover. It, and I, I kind of like how they do this because it's voiceover for the audience, but the way it's worded is also kind of like her writing down her notes of like how the mother reacts to uh, the information she gives her, if that makes sense. It sounds like a case file. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like Scully at the end of an X-Files episode. Right. It's a little out of place because... I think this is one of the scenes that was excised for the uh, Nightmare at Shadow Woods. Oh, okay. It does. It does feel out of place. One because no one else narrates anything else in the movie. Right. Not even this character. Also, no. with the events that happen later, kind of makes you wonder how she can narrate. P.S. This is a producer because the woman who was yes, supposed to show I, up didn't just show never up did. for the yeah, role. So she was like, "Fuck it, I'll really? do it." Really? Yeah. She's like, "I got to get some cigarettes." Bye. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, the producer just stepped up and just did. Uh, filled the scene or filled the role which i think is pretty yeah. cool no it's pretty fucking red well now that you guys pointed out it does feel out of place but i was kind of into it i like the way they did this uh because you have the whole scene playing out as she's doing this voiceover about yeah todd's finally starting to have recollections of that night and he says he didn't do it it was his brother and i don't know how the mother's going to react and you're watching as like you know she's telling the mother and the mother's like hey, no we are not terry oh no terry's my perfect son <laughs> i think it's fine 
Uh, I also don't need it either. Like you could, it, yeah. It's one of yeah. those things where it's like, all right, do do we have Decker do the inner monologue, or we don't have Decker do the mon- inner monologue? You know what I mean? I found out I was a replicant, or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. It could have just been the scene of her talking to her done. Over the narration, there's like uh, delightfully hammy acting from uh, Todd and the mom, where she's he's <laughs> like he's like reaching, <laughs> he's like got the pie in his hands, and he's just like mushing all over the place, and he's just like. <laughs> Well, I think because she doesn't believe him, yeah. right? he's just like, fuck you, yeah. get yeah. out of here with this pie bullshit. He gets up and throws it against the wall. Man, when he throws it against the <laughs> wall, I fucking die every time I see it, dude. It's just too funny. Dude, that's like an old person at the shop right after they have a little diarrhea. They got to throw it against the wall. You know, I, flush it. I, I didn't need to be reminded of my time in retail. Just a heads up, um, the twins, the adult twins are played by one actor. His name's Mark Sopper. Dude, he is great. He is fantastic in this film. But it's just. And I love how they do this. Yeah. It's just funny for this particular part because when Mark is Todd, he has like. He like slumps over. He's like. Yeah. Um, he's like he slouching. Like, he like musses his hair too. And then yeah. when he's Terry, it's in full blow dried, like blowback mode where it's, it's totally styled. He's fucking Brad Stirring all over the place as Terry. Yeah. Dude, they, the, the way they present these two uh, brothers, they're almost on like opposite ends of the crazy spectrum if that even makes any sense sure i I only say that because todd is clearly crazy from being shoved in this fucking asylum uh for for a crime he didn't commit and then just from the the shock and the uh ptsd from the whole event yeah and having to try to prove his innocence too right and then terry obviously which we'll get into shortly is just crazy because of one what he does one, what he did, two, what he does in this movie, and three, just the way that he just, we'll get into it, but just the way he acts in this film yeah. is, is a different type of crazy. The way that he carries himself is so good, and Mark Sopper does such a fucking good job of playing these two different characters, like, like to a T. They're it's, so good. Uh, yeah. It's Ted Bundy-esque, where he, he's trying to disarm you with a lot of excess charisma and charm. Right, yeah. Right. To maintain a certain facade. So, yeah, I, I liked this dude as... At first, I thought there were two actors, but then after a while, I was like, oh, I looked it up, and it was just one. I was like, wow, he's doing this very well. Yeah, well, that was the thing. Um, I... I th- I feel like the first time I saw this, I thought it was two people, and I wanted to I wanted to bring that up because I wanted to see if you guys thought it was two people uh, when you watched it. Um, I mean, I, I can't give a fair answer to that because when I was looking up Wikipedia to find out the actor's name, it was kind of like right there yeah. in the face. Gotcha, gotcha. But uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, like when you, when you get a good look at them both in lighting, you can kind of see it, but I feel like Todd's kind of shrunk over and in shadows for most of the film that it, like unless you're really paying attention or yeah. later scenes when they interact more. I feel like you could miss it. Once there's a stunt guy playing the opposite, you're kind of yeah. just like, oh, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> the, ha- the-, the hair is a dead giveaway. You're like, that's not the same hairstyle. He's kind of got the he's kind of got the Job hair in the, in the <laughs> Todd does specifically. Do you want a strawberry or what? No Cybo men to save him this time. <laughs> no, he's no, there is not. You want some pumpkin pie or what, Cybo? <laughs> Fucking Cybo man would be eating that shit off the wall. Let's be real. He would. Just takes a finger and he's like, <laughs> "How do you translate that, Connor?" Uh, I don't think I can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> At least not as good as the first time. I don't want to ruin that one. It's good pumpkin pie, Sarah. Goldfarb or uh, Maddie. There you go. Th- yep. Thanks. Uh, and then we fucking cut right to Terry and his friends playing a game of football. Terry and the Caucasians. <laughs> It cuts specifically after the doctor's monologue talking about how she explains to Maddie how Terry is the one that did it, and that's what Todd's saying, and and Maddie basically, like, saying, no, no, there's no way, and, you know, Todd, you know, Terry's perfect, and it cuts to him smiling, playing, you know, field football with his friends, kissing his girlfriend. They're listening to Bon Jovi, you know? Yeah. Yeah, him him and the Fonzarellis. (laughs) Yeah. These two fucking New York, like, accent boys. Chachi and fucking Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. They are two of the most square-jawed, dark-featured white dudes I've ever seen. In some scenes, I was like, you can't stand next to each other. I don't know which one's which. I mean, they are whatever's for sure. Uh, Their actual names are Greg and Artie. Greg Ramsey? Greg Greg Ramsey. Yeah. You know, because they do that whole thing where friends call each other By the first last or names. last name. Because yeah. they, uh, they call Terry uh, Simmons a lot. Now that you mention it, that's funny, because I always got La Scola. No, nah, see, I never really got the last name. I didn't have too, have too many friends with the same first. I think that was the uh, issue. Uh, I got my middle name 
because it's Seamus, and people love that. That's a good one, though. Well, you know, I didn't know that till now. <laughs> now, you know, I'm going to put that in the old back pocket. Oh, man, that's like, he was dropping some lore on us in the fucking, uh, that was, all, oh, if, yeah. if we if that's we go true. all the way back to Rawhead Rex, our first episode. And you know what? Honestly, it probably came up in Luck of the Irish, and I just don't remember. Probably. that whole movie was such a fucking, like, whirlwind uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking experience. Well, I, I, I think we were too busy having our heritage insulted the entire time, so. That's right. Sure was not me you guys yeah yeah good times potato fat him so, um. <laughs> so we're introduced to uh karen here too so so we get that we get the fonzarellis and we get uh karen and then just by like walking by we get introduced to, to happenstance uh, <laughs> by happenstance we get introduced to andrea they're like hello we're in the movie now too <laughs> hi i'm andrea this is my mom your mother invited us over for thanksgiving so we'll be there bye <laughs> let me plant seeds that i want to fuck you now even though your girlfriend's right there oh man and he just doesn't give a fuck terry's like yeah okay you want to fuck later let's do it here's here's the here's this is actually the scene that like the facebook post i made came from a lot of villains in 80s slasher movies do nothing to hide their villainy, and it makes me laugh every single time. Terry is immediately a sociopath. You're like, ah, you're fucked oh, yeah. in the head. <laughs> He's so brazen, and yeah. nobody seems to notice except Karen because it's directly affecting her, and everybody yeah. else is like, yeah, whatever. He wants to fight, whatever. He flirts with anything that has a pulse. Well, it's like, you know, look at look at other like more well-known movies with characters like that, like, you know, Vampire's Kiss or American Psycho. Like, well, yeah. Both of those char- I mean, I'm not comparing like the performance or the, or the films, per se say but they're both clearly crazy when yeah. you actually like watch the movie but people around them just think they're like oh they're a little high strung <laughs> Tara you cartoon character <laughs> oh he's got some fucking pa- Patrick Bateman shit going on for sure you like Huey Lewis in the news or what is that a raincoat yeah yeah especially towards the end of this movie yeah um, but yeah, like, it just seems like they just met these people, and then, like, about 40 minutes later into the film, they're like, it seems like they knew each other for years. It doesn't really make any sense, but I guess some people become fast friends. Ugh, question mark. Mom walked over, she's like, come to Thanksgiving! Ah! Oh well, my god. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, come to our Thanksgiving. Cut, it's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're having Thanksgiving dinner right in the beginning of this film. Yeah, it's all one night. Yeah, and just like Home Sweet Home, it's there for, just, you know, just just to have it. It's not really, it doesn't really affect anything. I mean, they they fucking lean into it a lot in this film. Yeah. Rather than Home Sweet Home. And and guess what? They actually figured out the lighting in this movie. You know, they filmed Holy it shit, with yeah. lights. <laughs> hey, it's just dark out. It just looks dark out. It's not actually dark out. <laughs> <laughs> you you can see what the fuck's happening when fucking Terry hacks somebody in half. Yeah, if people don't just emerge from stark black voids on the screen. All right, except for mistake, you can't you can't miss that fucking <laughs> white glob on his face. Yeah. Hey everybody, want to listen to some fucking guitar or whatever? God, body body by Jake just comes out of the fucking <laughs> chest. He never died. Remember, his eyes open at the end of that movie, and just he finds mistake in any way, shape, or form that he's you know in this uh, current plane of existence and just strangles him. What is he like Jet Li in the one where he just goes from universe to universe? And just killing this kid? He could be. I mean, he's got to sell those Betamax tapes, and you know, he's got to sell them to somebody. So if he can't sell them in this universe, he's got to go to the next one. That's great. I want to see Body by Jake versus Terry. Oh my god! The fucking Thanksgiving slasher showdown. Okay. Terry just fucking just like Obi Wan's him and cuts him in half. <laughs> <laughs> He sm- but he smokes a dube, right? And Body by Jake fucking puts PCP in his eye or whatever. He snorts it. You always act weird when you're high, Terry. The the, the, the Popeye theme plays. <laughs> you fucking John Hurt's rubbing his shoulders like, get in there. Remember, you're my number one. Unfortunately, the universe that Body by Jake's from, it's actually John Hughes Buchanan. So it's like he's not really sure about this, uh, you know, Joe Buchanan character. He's not sure who to trust. He doesn't care. He just keeps giving him PCP. Well, we had the two fit. We, we had that John Hughes. Uh, you know, fusion dance going on back about a year ago. I, th- I feel like it kind of fell apart between seasons, but it was there for a hot minute. We'll come back to it. No stone gets left unturned in the MDU. Well, yeah. Well, John Hughes will come, Buchanan will come back when we get into fucking Christmas time. But, you know... <laughs> There's a, there, I don't know if that's a warning or something I should just like mark down happily. <laughs> it's always a warning when, when John Hughes Buchanan is mentioned. But I would assume that he's in Terry's corner for this escapade. Sure, sure, sure. So then we're sitting down to fucking Thanksgiving dinner, and this is the most... Uh, the way this, this is shot, and uh, it just feels gross to me. Um, I have a question. Who the fuck dressed Terry? Um, his mom. Okay, because he's got a fucking button-down shirt on with a tie, but the collar is popped all the way up, 
And then his tie is loosely tied around his neck, just hanging there. He looks like a six-year-old who didn't get finished being like getting dressed. Well, and I think that's kind of like some underlying things with this issue that they, they don't come out right saying. But like clearly this mother has some issue with her kids. Like beyond the fact that she has mental issues, whether it's like a PTSD or just she can't handle what happened, you know, ten years prior. But, uh, you know, she treats both of her kids in different capacities still as small children. And it seems like Terry kind of leans into that a little more and his friends don't pick up on it at all. She again, she's got the those gross like I love my son too much kind of things. And like, you're yeah. my baby. We no, we don't need nobody's but us because we, we love each other. So whatever. It's gross. Yeah. Uh, do we meet Brad, her boyfriend, here, too? An- another dark-haired, square-jawed man. Oh, uh, we're gonna get a few more of those as the movie closes <laughs> out. She's like, I- we have an announcement to make, everybody, before we eat. Me and Brad are getting married. But she says it, and, like, as soon as she says getting married, he says, tie in the knot. And they say it at the same time, and I'm like, what? <laughs> what did you say? And then the movie goes, boom, boom, boom! And pans yep. over to Terry. <laughs> yeah, well, you you see Terry visibly twitch. At oh the yeah, announcement. Terry's like nobody fucks my mom except me. Also, uh, I want to just comment on this because last year when we did do Home Sweet Home, uh, Connor made a good point that you know the the killer besides the fact that he's mentally he has a quirk of uh, being on PCP, uh, Terry's quirk. Uh, believe it or not, is that he doesn't drink. No, he doesn't. Went in the other direction with this. He just has milk and he has some tomato juice later, but no alcohol. I did love the visual of him toasting with a glass of milk. Mommy said I can't have alcohol. He's a highly functional sociopath. Like, he can he can blend in easily. Well, Body by Jake had the, pro- the mom problems too. Oh, yeah, you're right. You know what? That's a good point. That would be a fucking showdown, man. I think you're onto something. Yeah. Did he? He only brings it up like once or twice. Maybe he's maybe he's the other kid. You think? Like the twins, and then and he's the older brother, right? He's the reason mom is so fucked up. Yes, because he was on PCP. Uh, and then like Terry stands up, like I said, to toast with them, and he has a glass of milk. Um, they do the toast, and then he has like he grabs the fucking turkey knife, and he's like, "Hey, Brad." <laughs> Why don't you do the honors? You gotta pull your weight around here, fucker. Congratulations on engaging my mom. <laughs> and points a knife directly at his chest. He's like, <laughs> I'm not threatening you. Great, I'm gonna cut this turkey. Okay, son? All right, sport. Sport, uh, tiger, whatever. So they cut. he cuts this fucking turkey, and then uh, Maddie like goes into the kitchen. And while Maddie's in the kitchen for a second, we're gonna get to what happens, but right before... The what sets this whole thing off is they're like sitting at the table and Andrea and her mom are sitting there, right? Because, okay, they're at dinner and we're just forgetting about them. <laughs> we just met you yesterday, but we it seems like we're old friends. Not even. They're like, this, it's like the same day, right? The same night. I guess it's got to be. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So they're sitting there and she's like, and he's like, so what do you do? She's like, well, I'm home from college and I just want to party. Uh, I like long walks on the beach and margaritas. And she fucking, he's like, uh, Terry's like, oh, you can like hang out with us or whatever. He's like, yeah, really? Uh, you want to come over later? Cause I'm babysitting. And he's like, yeah, sure do. And fucking Karen's sitting there and she's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> what do you mean you're going <laughs> over there by yourself? Meanwhile, mom takes a phone call in the kitchen and she's like, uh, 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 I need to speak to you. And then Terry, Terry, she spends the rest of the fucking movie on the phone. <laughs> Yes, because apparently Todd broke out of the fucking asylum, and the doctor's like, "Oh, I'm on my way. We we, we got to find him. Uh, I'm definitely not Doctor Loomis, but uh, Brenner, Burner, Berman. I shot him six times <laughs> with a tranquilizer gun. Six okay, times. Okay, don't, don't, don't jump the, the gun. No pun intended. <laughs> but we'll get to that shit. <laughs> oh my god, fucking Doc Berman and fucking Jackie. Here we go. It's not a gun, Connor. It's an injector. Oh, pff, sure it is. <laughs> He's got fucking the Las Plagas in there. So, yeah, she she gets told that Todd uh, escaped. And, uh, Terry kind of comes into the kitchen, and she tells him. She's like, Todd escaped. And she's like, don't tell anybody. It'll be awkward. <laughs> so they sit oh down. Oh, my God. So they sit down. <laughs> And doesn't someone say, like, what a lovely family you have? And then Terry's like, yeah, you'll get to meet all of them because my crazy brother escaped. Cuts into turkey, takes a bite. Yeah, he's like, my psychotic brother just escaped. Can you pass the green beans, please? Yeah, Yeah, he says it with a stone-cold stare. (laughs) 
<laughs> and his mother literally looks like she's gonna die. Oh yeah, and she then just for, stares at him shaking. She's like, "You piece of shit." <laughs> from here on out, this is how she looks from the rest of the, for the rest of the film. Oh yeah, Dude, she gets drunker and sadder as the movie progresses. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it is it is a sad spiral that is very um real it feels very real yes <laughs> um unfortunately and, and and like you guys were saying before uh her arc i feel like is what this is the legs that this movie stands on right like yeah, yeah it's it's a great slasher and there's a lot of great kills and and stupid jokes and it's and the and the score and it's a hokey and whatever it's a good b movie time but like at the core of it you have something really serious happening, and I think that's why this works so well as a whole. Well, because it takes itself seriously too. Like right. that, that helps it in the long run. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this isn't this isn't Uncle Sam where it's like some serious shit is going on behind the scenes, and meanwhile, you know, guys getting blown up by you know Robert Forrester's getting blown up by fucking fireworks. A scene right after. Y- you you mean meanwhile a man with stilts is peeping into someone's <laughs> window? Right. You right. Mean, <laughs> you mean like when we? You mean the parts we never get in the actual movie? Is that what yeah. you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, this film does a really good job with balancing everything. Yeah, for so it's sure. consistent and it flows really well because of that. Cuts to Todd walking around. He's like moping around downtown or some shit. Yeah, like a, like reacclimating to the area. Yeah, weird. Yeah, he's like trying to find his way home because he's, you know, he's broken out. <laughs> he's just both, he's hoofing it. He passes a chunky chicken. <laughs> Yeah, he passes it and fucking and fucking marks in there. He's like, "All right, yeah. Charnetsky, what do you want?" He's like, you, "Don't forget that fucking honey on my roll." Are you saying demonic toys and this movie both take place in the same night? It could. Yeah. Well, no, it couldn't. Well, I guess we don't actually know when demonic toys took place. We just know that sixty six years ago mm-hmm. on Halloween, they you know that baby was born. They uh, threw in a lump. We know that sixty six years ago, a demon got yeeted over someone's shoulder into a pit of garbage. <laughs> Hey man, it, it it's only it's only a month later, so who knows? Very yeah, true. Yeah, it's cold. We're eating turkey. It's fine. Uh, do we go to Brad's office? Who's like home now? I think. No, this is where this is where the doc shows well, up. Well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> First, we have this quick scene where uh, you know Maddie and Brad and Terry are kind of cleaning up after everybody left, and you know Maddie's really shook, and and Brad's trying to comfort her, and of course that sets Terry off some more. So, in fact, Brad and Maddie literally go to their own, their fucking bedroom to, like, you know, have a little talk. You know, you know, Brad's trying to get her all positive. She's trying to fuck her, really. Yeah, for sure. He's like, yeah, I feel bad, but uh, I want to get laid. And she's like, I can't. And he's like, okay. Still tries to, like, open her shirt. She's like, I really can. He's like, all right. And then, like, fucking. Why don't you just relax? <laughs> yeah, just relax. Meanwhile, Terry's <laughs> literally standing with the door open, like, six inches watching. With a huge bump in his pants. So we cut to, uh, you know, after that quick scene of Terry being a creep, we get a uh, knock at the door, and it's this guy, Jackie, who's got a fucking <laughs> pistol. What the <laughs> fuck? He's like, he's like, oh, I thought you was. Is that him, Doc? Is is that the fuck? Is that Terry or whatever? And she's like, no, that's that's Terry, not Todd. They're, they're twins, you fucking idiot. They look the same. Like this guy doesn't understand what twins are. What do you mean? There's twin? Uh, there's two of them? Man, you guys look alike, like a lot alike, dude. I that that's maybe my only fucking knock on this movie is how many people see these two guys and are conf- are like, oh, hey, Terry, but it's Todd, and oh. Is that Todd? No, it's Terry. Their fucking hairstyles are so different. How do you get these guys confused? Their stature, the whole fucking, the whole nine is different about them. They're, they might as well be night yin and yang, dude. Yeah. Like when these people walk up to Todd or Terry, they're like, hold on, let me put my hands over my face like I'm looking at you in a very small circle so I don't see any of your other features <laughs> but your chin up. If I squint like, my eyes, you look the yeah, same. Yeah, I don't know. That, that That's my only knock against this film, honestly. But uh, continue. To be fair, everybody's fucking drinking and fucking smoking weed this whole movie. So Very true. Go figure. Uh, yeah, so Terry opens the door and this dude Jackie points a, a fucking gun in his face. And then Dr. <laughs> Burmer, I th- Burner? Burmer. Uh, Berman. Sh- Berman shows up and she's like, no, it's fine. It's just a tranquilizer. What the fuck are you doing running around with a tranquilizer gun? But here's a better question. <laughs> Were you going to shoot this man in the fucking eye with a tranquilizer gun? Yeah, like, what the fuck? Also, <laughs> you would have fucking call- killed him. Did you call the police? <laughs> No, they're just they're just like again, you you nailed it with the Loomis comment, dude. Yeah. He was my patient. <laughs> <laughs> 
evil. She basically is, man. Fucking burden of responsibility. Except, obviously, you know, the key difference here is that she thinks her, uh, you know, her patient is innocent and yeah. the uh, brother is crazy. Yeah, but, the, the uh, one who know. escaped isn't going to hurt anybody. <laughs> but but we're still trying to trank him for whatever reason, but okay. Also, you gave the gun to this twitchy moron? Like, he's probably going to shoot the first thing he fucking sees, and he almost did. Who, who is this guy, this fucking meathead Jackie? He's like some kind of, like, Chris Kattan motherfucker who's, like, too big <laughs> for his britches. Chris Kattan? He's like, yeah, I got trusted with a pistol uh, tranquilizer. I'm tough now. I got a doobie in my pocket. I'll shoot the twin, boss. I got him. Oh, you're not him. Are you him? I don't know. We'll talk about it later when I see you later. So while they're debating this, uh, Brad and fucking Maddie run out. And they're like, oh my god, did you find my son? And uh, they haven't. So uh, Brad's like, all right, well, uh, I've spent my Thanksgiving with you, dear. Uh, I'm going to go back to my office and just uh, have a cold one. Yeah, because he's <laughs> like, I, I can't take this shit or whatever. Like, I'm not getting laid and your crazy son's on the loose. Because apparently this guy owns this apartment complex. So he kind of walks off with the doc and this uh, Jackie character. He's like giving them like pointers on where they could catch him. He's like, yeah, well, my best bet would be, uh, you know, he'd be, they'd be hanging out on the porch. Or there's a nature walk over there. That, see that bridge <laughs> over there? He might be over there. And it's like, yeah, he, I guess he he could be over there. Yes, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. How do you know? Oh, I own the place. All eight <laughs> acres of it. Eight <laughs> fucking acres? <laughs> what is this, Disney World? <laughs> <laughs> what? This apartment complex does seem huge because of the noise that travels that no one seems to pick up on. It's my butterfly preserve in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> that would actually be, a, be you know, I was going to say more believable, but like this, not that this is not believable, but it's like, holy shit. Not to mention that uh, maybe they filmed this in a hotel, but fucking Maddie's bedroom looks like a hotel room, but I digress. I think it's just, it, I think what it is, it's just like old apartments right so this yeah, is maybe, maybe yeah well this is true. 83 right so we have it, it, you know when you watch uh movies that are like right or like if if you watch movies in like the 90s like 1989 1990 right you have the 80s yeah. spilling over right into it right mm-hmm. and i think for this film like 1983 the 70s are still spilling all over that just like friday the 13th too even. yeah yeah that's true um so that's what it looks like you know with the fucking like the that like pea green kind of color and those oranges and like paisleys yeah. yeah yeah there's paneling everywhere or ugly wallpaper so uh so brad he goes back to his fucking you know office and he goes and he's got the freaking Joel Osteen playing in the background, the religious radio. <laughs> you can you can be saved if you do the thing or whatever. It, you know, Jesus, praise Jesus in the name of the Lord. Donate all your fucking savings to this. No sex before marriage. Don't you dare fuck a thing, but you can drink yourself silly and beat your wife. <laughs> You know what, Connor? Maybe that's why Brad left. You know, he's such a devout Catholic. He didn't want to break his vows. It's possible. He's got that PBR in a in a draw. <laughs> I'm a proper gentleman. This motherfucker's drinking Schlitz, dude. <laughs> well, he goes in there. He's got the PBR in his hand, and he's going through some like paperwork or some bullshit. And uh, Terry kind of, you know, creeps up on him with a machete. He fucking does a shave and a haircut on his fucking door. No one locks their door in this movie. No, <laughs> it's Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. Florida man, Terry's Florida man. <laughs> Florida man cuts guy's hand off. I'd be locking that shit just so an alligator doesn't creep up on me. Yeah, you think so? There's got to be like a little fucking pond or a lake or something with the fucking gator in it. Dude, I lived in Florida and alligators don't give a shit about you down there. They'll wander up into your backyard. They're like, whatever, I lived here before you did. They're apex predators. I don't know, Burmese python, Terry, take your pick. Yeah, could be take the python to be honest so terry fucking <laughs> terry fucking shaving a haircuts on this fucking door and he walks in and brad's like oh well, hey well look look what the cat dragged in and then terry cuts his fucking hand <laughs> off with a machete <laughs> and he like yeah. the, the hand with the beer in it and it just goes flying and starts like wriggling on the floor this effect is so fucking There's fun fucking blood shooting everywhere dude the best part about the effect though in my opinion is that the hand starts spasming and the yeah. beer just starts shooting all over the place yeah it's like on the floor floor like wriggling and then this motherfucker is just sitting there it, what seems like 20 seconds of this blood just shooting out of his wrist all over the place and then we cut yeah we cut to jackie and uh the doc looking for todd and the docs are just like listen like stop complaining we need to find this fucking guy and watch out for his brother and he's like yeah 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 
So he, he she's in the fucking woods for like God knows how long. It feels like hours, even though it's only a few minutes. And uh, this guy's like wandering around the apartment complex, like kicking up rocks and shit. Like, why do I have to do this? Because she takes the gun, the uh, the the pistol, fucking trank from him, and he's yeah. like, what am I supposed to use now? Well, because you can't be trusted with it, Jackie. You know all that too. He's like walking around calling out for Todd. He's like, hey, Todd, you here? I got some goodies. You want to get high? Yeah, like he's a lost dog. Like, come here, boy. <laughs> yeah. You want to smoke this fucking Jaybird with me or what? And I'm like, does this guy get high with this patient? Like in the fucking place? So he's like, ah, fuck it. You're assuming he's a doctor. Dude, he's like an orderly, like straight up. Exactly. He's like walking around. He's trying to be finding this guy who's supposedly insane. And he's like, you know, singing to himself, he's a lunatic. Like, what an unprofessional ass. This is the guy taking care of the fucking dream warriors down at the clinic, dude. Yeah, yeah. So he fucking comes and sits down and he, and he just like sits on this person's porch. And he just lights up this fucking bone and he's just smoking, puffing away. And then Terry rolls up on him and he's like, holy shit, are you Todd or are you Terry? Terry has a machete in his hand that he just quickly tucks behind his back. <laughs> he sure does. And guess what? He goes, uh, hey, uh, Terry, you you know, you, you want to hit, man? You want to relax? He's like, yeah, you know, you want to hear this crazy theory? Yeah, Todd says he didn't kill anybody. He says it was you. Can you believe that shit? And then Terry's like, yeah, you know what? Uh... Stabs him in the chest. Yeah, he did kill some people. Dude. And go, oh, you're underselling that one because he's just, he fucking rears back this machete and jams <laughs> yeah. it through this guy's chest and it shoots out of his back and you see the whole thing. It's great. It's the, the gore in this movie can't be understated. Like, it's it's all, like, to the extreme of their ability and there's long shots of it. Uh, there's very, very few cutaways. Yeah, you, it holds. You see that shit go in and out and spray. It's lovely. This movie's very proud of itself in that department. And you know what? I didn't think about it till later in the film, but, like, where he ends up getting stuffed by Terry makes so much sense. And, like, when it, ha- <laughs> when it, came, when it comes up later, I'm like, oh, yeah, duh. Yeah. Uh, we, we get this quick scene with the mom, and she's just so upset. She's been, like we were talking about a little bit earlier, she's just been drinking since she got the news. Todd escaped, and now... Uh, she, she just put these leftovers away, man, but just like everybody else at home, they're breaking that shit out like two hours later and fucking making a sandwich. Is this where she's sitting on the floor in the kitchen, just like with the refrigerator open, just shoving food into her mouth? Sobbing. This is so disgusting and just like sad, right? This woman is sitting like with her legs like sp- spread on the floor just with like bowls of leftovers in the fridge door open and she's just pushing this shit into her mouth like mashed potatoes and green beans and shit it's it's really sad it's depressing as hell it's man. depressing the sad it's sad but the sudden cut to it made me laugh because i wasn't ready for it and it's just like there's just a shot of a woman laying on the sitting on the floor eating thanksgiving leftovers yeah um do we go back to the doctor in the woods? Sure do. Doc Berman's fucking walking around, shining her flashlight looking for Todd. And then um, Terry rolls up on her. However, it cuts back here because you see fucking... It goes back to Maddie and she's like fucking emptying a bottle of wine into like a giant cup. Yeah, and isn't she like... She's like cleaning the fucking... She's like obsessively doing small tasks just to keep herself busy. Yeah, she's like cleaning the fucking yeah. fridge and the, and the oven and what have you. Uh, she's lost it, man. Uh, so we cut back and the doctor is just <laughs> in half on the ground. <laughs> Terry's got a hell of a fucking swing. <laughs> like bisected. She's been fucking bisected. Terry cut her right in half, man. Well, and, and, uh, and just to put some emphasis or, or a little mustard, let's say, on that last scene. Like, it wasn't just a matter of, like, he approaches her cut, this other scene happens, comes back, cut and have It's like... It's like a Fulci film or an Argento movie. It, 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 like, zooms in on, like, the killer's POV going towards her and her just, like, not even really screaming, just mouth open, aghast. It's, I don't know, it's it's parts funny, parts creepy, parts, like, what the fuck just happened? It's super creepy. Then, it all elicits a reaction because you see him there and then it cuts away and you think, like, oh, you're not going to show that. But then it cuts back and you're like, oh, my God, that woman is in half. <laughs> 
Shh. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's eviscerated. And it's just one of those things where you have to laugh because you're like, oh, my God, they did that. And she's still alive, mind you. She's still dying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's grabbing her, her insides and trying to push them back in. She's like, ah! <laughs> oh, yeah. She's half buried in that fucking ground, fucking pushing all those fake guts back into her fucking abdomen. It looks great. And this is this is where you get that scene where Todd approaches the uh, the Shadow Woods sign proper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they kind of they kind of hang on it for like five seconds while he's kind of get, getting his bearings. It says Nightmare at Shadow Woods TM. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like a black bar over that that was like superimposed <laughs> in. You know, this is like a nightmare at <laughs> Shadow Woods. <laughs> Registered trademark. So so Terry at this point after killing. Killing his soon-to-be father-in-law and, uh, you know, chopping down this doctor and her fucking assistant. Uh, you know, his shirt's totally covered in blood. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what does anybody uh, do that has this problem? Uh, they go home and, uh, you know, take a shower. Yeah, man, he gets zestfully clean. And he uh, disposes of that shirt properly. Yes, properly. <laughs> in the garbage can in the kitchen. Bitch, <laughs> in the fucking kitchen. <laughs> He fucking, he, he like, uh, there's one part, okay, this is the first cranberry sauce line, because he's like, oh my god, right. He like, fingers some blood on his shirt and like, licks it, and he's like, that's definitely not cranberry sauce. Maybe we're wrong, maybe the root of his insanity is cranberry sauce. It, oh my god. May, maybe, maybe when he was, when he was little, he, mom had one of her boyfriends over, and he went to reach for the cranberry sauce, and the boyfriend reached over and grabbed the last portion of it. And then, and then he's he's been he's been he's been driven insane, and now he hates all of mom's boyfriends because they're gonna take his cranberry sauce. Yeah, man, he's like they're they were. I mean, he could have uh, he could have been left with the crappy homemade that you were complaining about last year, Connor. The, oh. the, apparently, the the, the 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 McGraw family makes horrible uh, you know homemade cranberry sauce, so maybe they took the last of the crappy. They took the last of those delicious can shaped globs of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> leaving Terry with just the uh, you know the the crappy homemade and that you know that that set off something inside him he couldn't hold back. The the boyfriend was fucking the mom on the Thanksgiving table with all the food and then cranberry sauce got everywhere. Got a little cranberry sauce in her cooch and then and then fucking shot a load on his cranberry sauce and that was that. Oh my god. <laughs> um, that's that's you know this movie's already bleak, Joe, but uh, that that brings it to another level. Hey man, it's just it's, it's a wrinkle that I think uh, could be there. Look for it in the Rob Zombie. Re- May coming to a theater near you. <laughs> he fucking would. He'd be like, all right, everybody say fuck 900 times and then white trash mom fucks on his food. If Sid Haig was still alive, RIP, you know he'd have Spalding in there fucking somebody with his dirty drawers on the top of a turkey if he could. Yeah, he w- oh, he'd be fucking the turkey. The boyfriend would be played by Richard Brake. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, wait, okay, directed by Rob Zombie, produced by Eli Roth. There you go. All right, someone pay us. Ooh, starring Patrick Wilson. Thanksgiving, fuck a turkey or whatever. And everybody's from the South and they're disgusting and need showers. Um, P.S. P.S. That movie can stay a trailer because I think if it was an actual movie, it would suck. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, look what happened to Machete. Machete was fun the first time and they made a sequel and we're like, fucking take it back. <laughs> Not even a sequel. They made the movie. Well, you know, like I've talked about in the past, man, that character is an extension of the Spy Kids universe. He is. So, uh, yeah, man, Uncle Machete. How many times I got to bring this up on the show? I know. <laughs> you did. Go back and listen to the old episodes, Connor. You keep telling everybody listening to the show to listen to the old episodes, and you don't even do it yourself. I do, too. <laughs> my my <laughs> memory is just terrible. If Eli Roth made Thanksgiving 15 years ago, it would be good. Or it would be okay, question mark. At the peak of his, at the peak of his hostile uh, uh, time period? Before he became a one-trick fucking pony. <laughs> Um, we go to an apartment where Terry's, uh, what is it? We go to Andrea's apartment, I think? Uh, yeah, sure do. We're fucking having vodka and tomato juice or tomato juice and vodka. I mean, either one you can have. I, I, I missed that babysitting line earlier in the movie, so I just uh, I just thought she was, like, acting like this was her fucking place. No, but and she... Then the, those people come home, and I'm like, did I miss something? She might as well. She's just fucking inviting everybody over. Like, yeah, I'm babysitting. You guys want to go over and, like, fuck and, like, watch a movie and get drunk or what? Come over and awkwardly play video games? <laughs> yeah, right? That's in a different apartment, though. Yeah. Well, they're all, like, the same fucking cottage layout. They're all, like, they're all, like, townhouses. Mind you, mind you, when, when and Terry's getting changed before he leaves to go to Andrea's house. Uh, the mom is constantly calling Brad, and he's not picking up. And the 
this is fucked up. They cut to Brad's fucking office. <laughs> and <laughs> it's so good. Terry has him propped up in his chair to look like he's like looking at his paperwork, but like clearly his hands missing, his eyes are all fucking open and, and, and blood coming out of him. And there's blood all over the office. You know how like sometimes like little kids pose with like their fists, their fists on their chin and it's like cute. Yeah. That's how this guy is posed. And he's got one hand, what one hand and one no hand like propping his head up. And that's the position he's in. Yeah. At his desk with a fucking huge gash in the middle of his head. Uh, Terry tries fucking somebody else here, doesn't he? Well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Andrea tries fucking Terry, but Terry, uh... I, he, he's playing a long game. I guess so. he's crazy, guys. He's crazy. That's that. That's the point they're trying to make. He's fucking nuts. He's enjoying the fuck out of everything he's doing, and we're all privy to it except the characters yeah. on screen. Because like you guys are talking about, he goes to Andrea's uh, apartment slash where she's babysitting this kid. And uh, like like we were talking about, she's got the tomato juice and she's got tequila and he doesn't drink. So he gets the tomato juice, which I'm assuming the tomato juice was there for like, you know, Bloody Marys, I guess. Right. But why are we? What are you, what, how old are these people? 18, 19? I, I think they got to be at least 18, 19. But Terry does have a line that comes up brief. You know, in a, Terry has a line saying that they're not teenagers. So maybe, well, they went to college. So they got to be early 20s, I guess. Yeah. But who the fuck reaches for fucking Bloody Mary's at 12 o'clock at night. They'd be yeah. going to Harvard, man. They got that expensive w- shit there. White people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor just nailed it. I love a Bloody Mary, but not at night. Not personally a fan, but I know I'm in the minority on that one. So, yeah, you know, she she uh, she uh gets Terry's drink, and he sits down in front of the TV, and she's uh she goes in the other room briefly and takes her shirt off and comes back with just her bra on. She gets real close up to Terry and goes to kiss him, and he, he turns his head and turns on the fucking TV. He goes, he goes, ah, anything good on the tube? <laughs> Everything he does is like just, just is just devoted to fucking with people. Oh man, that's what's that's what he does. He loves it. He's sadistic. Well, while he's watching this fucking slasher movie, which he comments on, oh, I can't believe they show this on TV. Which is where I get the Bateman feels from this guy a little bit. He puts on a raincoat. He puts on the stereo. God, Bale. He's coming back. He is. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Karen, she goes to Terry's to, to, to kind of like smooth shit over because she's like feeling like the relationship's not going anywhere. So while she goes there, Todd's also trying to break into like the back of the house. Yeah. And she, uh, she kind of comes to the back because no one's answering the door. And she sees Todd in the shadows, and so she doesn't recognize him right away. Well, he does He does a piss-poor job at trying to show people that he's not crazy, because he walks up behind Karen and just, like, just tickles her hair a little bit. He's, like, doing his best Tim Burton impression. And she's like, oh, is, is that you, Terry? And he's like, uh... And she just is like, look, I'm sorry that, like, you know, we've been disconnected. And the whole thing with her is kind of sad, too, because, like, Terry's, Terry's like want like showing interest in like that andrea trick chick so karen feels obligated to be like hey you know i love you when uh i know we've been away from each other for a long time so let's make love because i don't want you to fuck the other lady she also in this same statement is like yeah we went to college and i never heard from you not a postcard a phone call nothing but uh i kind of want to make this work so i want to make love to you what do you say we're still going steady right and he goes, I've never kissed a girl before. <laughs> She's like, uh, fuck. And he's like, you know, I never kissed a girls before. And he's like, she's like, yeah, um, well, anyway. You should try it one day. Bye. Uh, bye. Yeah, you, bye. <laughs> she doesn't call the cops. She doesn't look for the mother. She just runs to the Fonzarellis. She thinks she's she thinks he's high at first. He's like, Terry, what are you smoking? Are you high? You're always weird when you're high. Yeah, and that's what she runs. She runs to the Fonzarellis, and and fucking Art, this guy Artie, he's fucking guys, who is like I guess like has a crush on fucking Karen, but doesn't you know want to act on it because he's being friend zoned repeatedly. Oh, he's best friend zoned for the, sure. This is the Jerry Seinfeld guy, by the way. He's like, ah, hey, yeah, you know, I'll show this uh, Todd character the fucking business. He's crazy, right? And he grabs a fucking baseball bat out of the trunk. What's the deal with Todd? <laughs> <laughs> everyone's everyone's like demeanor about this is so casual it's kind of comes it's it's very funny to me because it's, for all they know there is 
like a proven murderer, you know, proven in their eyes, like just wandering the apartment complex. And they're like, man, he's no big deal. Whatever. Like, let's just get our fucking tomato juice and vodka. Well, they shift back and forth on that, right? First, they're like, sometimes they're really scared and very cautious. And other times they just throw that shit right into the wind. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Eh. They're like, man, fuck Todd. It's not like Artie is like going in there like real careful, like stealthily. He's like jogging in like, hey, Todd, where are you? <laughs> hey, Todd, come here. I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> I'm going to hit you with this bat. Better come out. No, it's more like, it's like I'm going to hit you with this fucking bat over here. I got this bat for you. It, brings, it finally catches up to him, brings him down into a fucking basement that's got nobody down there. And just Todd's like, oh, fuck. He, the, he like collectively beats him and Terry in a cornfield somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I got your fucking brother here too. And then eventually they just become dummies. <laughs> they make them watch him. Which, which one gets killed and makes the other one watch? Like who's the one that goes down first? My brother. <laughs> yeah. Joe Joe Pesci. Yeah, Joe Pesci gets made to watch his brother fucking get beat to death first. <laughs> That's a fucked up scene. Like, he, just just a quick aside. He does the most fucked up shit in that movie, so I don't feel bad about it at all. Especially his brother, that scumbag motherfucker, spitting in the fucking cop sandwich. Uh, you know, not that I really give a shit about the cop sandwich. It's more so like if he didn't like me, if he would do it. But I, you know, hey, you get the point. The guy, the guy deserved to die. Uh, yeah. Side side note. He the, the the mob gave him the the mob gave him plenty of chances to clean up his act. <laughs> Meanwhile, Todd Todd did nothing wrong. It is fucked up, but the longer that scene goes on, I, it just starts to become kind of comical because it's like, ping, 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 ping. I don't know, man. I've never laughed at that scene, Connor. You're really painting a picture for me over here, man. <laughs> yeah. I just like the fact that they become very obvious dummies. I'm just like, wow, I'll, I, I'm going to rewatch this scene because of how well done the makeup is and how fucking, like, impactful it is. My stomach always gets a fucking knot from that, they dude. They throw the goddamn dirt on him while he's still breathing. Uh, it's fucked. Anyway. Um, Scorsese. They, uh, they never, they never find uh, Todd, and so uh, you know, the, you know, the Fonzarellis and fucking Karen, and uh, I don't know. Does Andrea go with them now, or am I jumping too far ahead? Uh, no, it's Andrea's babysitting, and for whatever reason, Terry leaves, and then she like stops babysitting. She like leaves the house because the uh, the the mother comes home with the boyfriend. Right. Okay, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And the boyfriend, oh my god, this fucking guy. Oh He's, man. Hi, hello, hi. Uh ha. Uh, I've I've never done anything exciting ever in my life. Hello, nice to meet you. I have a lot of money and this woman's hot to trot or whatever. My personality constantly runs at a two. <laughs> um if you blow if you whistle at me, I'll fall over. Gunner Hansen's my dad. <laughs> He's my uncle. Uncle Gunner. Yeah, this is his nephew who does his fucking taxes, for sure. He's like a <laughs> like a Lewis yeah. Tully motherfucker. I have a college graduate nephew. Lewis Tully's got more personality than this guy, and that's saying something. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about Ghostbusters 2, Lewis Tully. We're talking about one. First one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's been yeah, cuz let's let's face it, you're not fucking Janine. I'm sorry. <laughs> not in the first one anyway. No. No, not at all. Climbing on the fucking windowsill to unplug a TV, <laughs> Lewis Tully. It ain't happening. <laughs> it's Jan. <laughs> um, I turned up my TV real loud too. So this guy, he comes in, he's like, "Yeah, looks like you guys had a party." He's like looking at the liquor bottles, and uh, you know, Andrew's really busting this woman's balls. That uh, you know, hey, you know, you gotta give me the ten bucks you owe me for watching your kid. And she's like, "Ah, oh, really? You're we're neighbors," and she's like. Uh, yeah, you gotta pay me. And she's like, you know, playing up the angle that she doesn't have any cash. She goes to her sugar daddy and he, he breaks it out. And then some other shit happens, but I kind of want to just cover this scene now. Yeah, fuck it. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> Let's wrap her up fucking close her story arc. Yeah, she goes, to, you know, she's like, oh, I'm going to put on something nicer. And she comes back and the guy's sitting there and she just, uh, she doesn't have her coat on anymore. And uh, he's looking at the liquor bottles and reading them off, like all perplexed by them, like the sex uh, related names they have. Oh, my God. And she's like, all right, I'm going to go put something even nicer on. He's like, oh, oh, OK. She goes, he gets this fucking lingerie out of the drawer and they hear a knock at the door. So this guy gets up. I don't know what he sees. I guess he sees Terry, who had just left. Like a few minutes prior with Andrea, she's like, "Oh, that young man's back." Okay, all right. You don't, you don't, you don't actually see what happens to this guy right away. But then we get this woman in her lingerie coming out to get laid because she's got. <laughs> and this dude, this dude's like, "Ah, coconut liqueur." <laughs> 
Coconut Lake here. Sounds exotic. Not for children. It's it's body liquor or whatever. Oh yeah, and that's when she's like, "Oh, you want to try some?" He's like, "Uh, yeah. gulp." And she's <laughs> and she's got this fucking picture of Peter Frampton on her dresser. Yes. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> And before she comes out in her lingerie, she's talking to the baby like, I found a rich daddy for you. And she's like crossing her fingers, like praying that this works out. And I'm like, oh, God. You shut up now. Mama's going to get you a rich daddy. So she goes out and she goes out in the lingerie and she's looking for this guy. Like, where the fuck did he go? And she hears another knock at the door. And she looks out through the peephole and she's like, huh, what are you doing outside? Opens the door. This motherfucker's. <laughs> Head is just decapitated, hanging Ugh. from a cord off the fucking stairs that are, like, above her apartment. It's, it's still shooting blood everywhere. It's so fucking good. The only thing that would have made the scene better for me is if it showed fucking POV peephole. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. And he like, and you saw his eyes or whatever, and she'd be like, what are you doing out there, you goof? You silly man. And then it's just fucking decapitated head strung up by a fucking extension cord or some shit. Terry's really crafty with all of his killings. He also does the Jason thing where he has to set everything up in, like, some elaborate scene <laughs> afterwards. Like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, she goes to get her coat on, and he's, like, still in the apartment. And he just, like, kind of walks up behind her and just points the fucking machete, like, at her heart. And he's like, hello. Yeah, he's fucking happy birthday into me all over the place, too. <laughs> but but like you were saying, Joe, Andrea somehow gets looped in with the Fonzarellis and Karen, and they all go to hang out at a different place because Terry's just... He's fucking, he's being a weirdo, man. Yeah, Terry goes, like, somewhere, well, obviously he's still, you know, creeping around that apartment and he kills that dude, but, like, Andrea goes off and, like, runs into the Fonzarellis and Karen, and Karen's like, I saw Todd, blah, 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 and Andrea's like, shut up, bitch, I want to go fuck, like, what do you guys want to do, you guys want to fuck or whatever? And she fucking, like, puts her arms around the Fonzarellis and they're like, yeah, sure, babes, let's go, let's go do that. Yeah. And then, uh... They play video. They play video games. <laughs> <laughs> they play video games, and Andrea and Karen are like talking and bullshitting and drinking tequila. And then while they're doing that, you know, Terry kills the, that couple. Maddie's drinking fucking wine and vacuuming or whatever. Yeah, vacuuming under the bed. And uh, we have this quick scene where Todd finds the doctor, like you know, long dead at this point. <laughs> Dude, he tries to put her back together. He treats her like Humpty Dumpty. He grabs her legs and tries to reattach them to her torso. Uh, you know, obviously in vain. Yeah, it's real sad. He, you know, She's like the fucking scarecrow, man. Some of her's over there and some of her's over there. And he fucking tries to stuff it all back in. She didn't even get the goddamn respect Loomis got and get blown up. No. And he's like, he's like, oh, you're the only one that believed me. And why did it have to be you? Oh. Well, because you came here with a stupid kid who smokes weed. Because you didn't call the cops, <laughs> stupid ass. Well, then he he hears this little girl, like, walking around looking for a cat tiger or a tigger. And uh, he kind of goes up to her and he's like, listen, uh, you need to go home. And no matter what, if anyone knocks on your door, don't let them in. Lock the door. There's a wild person out here. Just go. <laughs> She's like, okay, creepy man, bye. And then she does. She she she's a very good girl. She goes home and locks that fucking door. You should brush your hair. <laughs> I like it a mess. By the way, I took a revolver out of my doctor's purse. I don't know what it isn't. I don't. I don't know yet that it has no bullets in it, but I took it anyway. Yeah. He took the most cap gun looking revolver I've ever seen in my life out of that bag, okay? Oh, we're painting that with fucking like dollar store spray paint, man, because it's like, what the oh, fuck? Oh, it looks so funny. Well, let me tell you something. If she was really fearing for her life, like obviously she she had that on her for protection. Why the fuck are there no bullets in it? I don't know. It, it's kind of like, it's funny, I'm referencing this again, but like Vampire's Kiss with Velma. You know, in the beginning, she just had that gun without anything in it, and then she gets, you know, obviously uh, justified more and, you know, more afraid of, you know, her boss, uh, Nick Cage. Right. So she she gets the blanks from her brother, but originally she's kind of doing the same thing, just walking around with an empty gun. That's even more dangerous, man. What happens, again, like, what happens if she finds, if if they, if the, whoever's doing whatever to you finds out there's no bullets in that gun? Yeah, threat eliminated. Yeah, not only threat eliminated, but, like, now you're going to get even worse because you just scared the shit out of that person, (laughs) you know what I mean? Well, right. I guess the idea being that, like, just having the gun alone is enough to scare up most criminals or most people out to get you. If you're carrying a gun 
I feel like there should be bullets in it. I, I, you know what I mean? I don't know. Because, like... No, yeah, yeah. You can't rely on getting scared. Like, if you're going to carry it, I mean. Like, if you're going to have it, you might as well go full bore. Like... The f- go the distance, yeah. Right, exactly. Anyway, I digress. Uh, it's important for later that it has no bullets, though. <laughs> yes, it, let's note that. Put a fucking pin in that one. So, while while this is all going on, we cut back to Todd, who's who's now actually breaking into his house. He got a screwdriver or some shit. Yeah, he, like, pops this fucking back door open. <laughs> the only locked door in the entire complex. Yeah, apparently. Well, he goes in there, and I guess he goes into his old room, or Terry's room, or maybe it's a little bit of both, and he's, like, looking around, and he grabs, like, an old ball glove, and he's kind of sitting there, I guess, like, taking in the moment. There's a fucking Yoda mask. Yeah. Do you blame the guy? And uh, he hears his mother in the hallway kind of, like, slump over. And he goes out there. Man, she just falls down in the hallway. She's like, Terry. Well, she's drunk as shit. Like, <laughs> Did you get the television? <sighs> she's been slamming wine since dinner ended. She's like Orson Welles in the fucking wine commercial. Did you say anything? That's right. <laughs> Terry. Ah, the French. Oh, Terry's French. Good night. He picks up Maddie and he puts her into bed and kind of tucks her in. And uh, he goes to leave, and she's like, Terry, is that you? Terry? Terry, the the, boy, the son I love the most, not that ne'er-do-well Todd. My only son. Who looks just like him. Because she, she says some, like, hateful shit like, Oh, I, I, Todd, Todd, I don't think it was real. I don't think he's really coming. I hope he went far, far away. Yeah, and Todd's like, fuck me, man. Why are you doing this to me, Mom? Yeah, he's playing the role. He's, he's just playing up the idea that she thinks he's Terry, so he just kind of goes along with it. Right. She's just, she's just laying there going like, Todd, why you do this to me? Todd. <laughs> Terry, why you do this to me? Give me a kiss. <laughs> oh, my God. And he fuck. he's like, okay. And she like, oh man, it's creepy, dude. He Tom Brady's this woman. This, this scene... And the, we'll get to it at the end, but, like, man, when he goes over to her and, like, kisses her, it's, it's, ugh, it's gross. Very uncomfortable. There's a lot of, cl- there's a lot of physical closeness between her and the boys that just kind of makes you go, ugh, stop it. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Stop it. Well, he kisses her on the lips, and it's like, okay, as a small child, sure, but. Which isn't uncommon, but. The way th- <laughs> that they do it is not okay. No, no not at all. Then we uh, we cut back to Terry kind of stalking the other group. And at this point, you know, Adrian and this Greg character, one of the Fonzarellis, go off into another room. And uh, Karen's playing with Artie, the video game. And uh, yeah, it fucking so. So Andrea and Karen and the, and the Fonzarellis are like in somebody else's apartment. I guess it's Andrea's apartment. I think it's Andrea's actual apartment. Yeah, and her mom's fucked off to wherever. But she's like, hey, Karen, let me show you how to do a fucking tequila shot. She's like, you put the salt on there, you lick it, and you drink the tequila, and you suck the lemon. Mmm. It, it, it's like her drink of choice, because she keeps giving people tequila. Like, she, when she goes in the other room with uh, Greg shortly thereafter, uh, she has tequila for him. And they're just kind of hanging out, joking around, and, uh... She just wants to party, man. She wants to party, man. Yeah, yeah. So so Karen and, and Artie are playing the video game, and Terry's kind of creeping outside. And uh, you don't really know what's going on other than that Andrea and Greg were just making out, and it's, it's focusing on Karen and uh, Artie, and then you hear Adrian yell out, so Karen goes to check on her and uh, Artie. And it's fucking Greg and Adrian basically have makeup on trying to act like they're, like, killers or some shit to fuck with Karen and Artie. I'm so glad they found the time to do this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let me tell you something. Her application of her makeup, that's like a fucking two-hour job. I'm telling you right now to put all that on and then do the makeup. But, like, what are you doing? Like, two seconds ago, you guys were about to fuck. And then you're like, you know what? You know what would be funny? If I did your makeup for three hours and then... Let's let's get the special effects makeup out. And let's scare our friends. (laughs) Let's scare our friends with special effects makeup or whatever. And uh, they do. And fucking Artie and Karen come running in. And they're like, oh my God, what happened? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, they're like, they're like, Andrea? Uh, isn't she naked? No, she has her clothes on. 
She has a tank top on, yeah. I mean, she might as... I mean, I mean, those high beams are on, but she's like... Well, no one wears a bra in this movie. <laughs> no, which is fine. I mean, whatever. Um, but it's just like, she gets up, she's like, oh, I spooked you, and fucking what's-his-face comes out of the closet with like a machete and like a cut on his face? Yeah. We had these from last like, month. Oh, we just figured we'd use them to fuck with you. Why not? All right. Actually, you just sealed the deal, man. It is. Ho- it's it's Halloween. It's in the same time realm as fucking uh, as demonic toys. It's Hallow's Giving. It's Thanksween. It's Hallow's Givings. Yes. <gasps> well, you know, and then and then Artie and Karen bail, and they go to a different party, and you get this scene. It might not be right after, but like maybe a little bit later, where uh, Adrian's taking a shower. And fucking Greg's sitting there still hitting the tequila, like, not sure what the big fucking deal is about it. And Terry is just in their apartment, just, like, watching her shower, but, like, doesn't do anything at first. He just kind of leaves. I guess he was going to kill them, but then they're like, we're going to go to a tennis court. What do you think? Yeah, we'll play tennis. He's creeping on him. Right. He's creeping on him, and then they go play tennis, question mark? Like, what? Because we have a whole shower. We have gratuitous boob shot in the shower. I love the idea of getting drunk at, like, midnight and just going to play tennis. They're not even drunk. They had, like, a shot of tequila. They, like, fooled around. She took a shower or whatever. I mean, is it insinuated that they fucked? I don't know. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah, but the idea of putting tequila in my body and then going to swing a tennis racket sounds like the worst fucking time to me, okay? that's That doesn't sound like fun. No, it, it doesn't. sounds kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> tequila, I want to sit down when you put tequila in front of me. Tequila, like what? A pool at the best? Let's play pool or like cards or something, yeah. right? I don't want to go play fucking tennis. Don't make me stand. Or tennis. <laughs> yeah, or tennis. Yeah, swing or run or have to breathe heavily. I don't want to do anything. Any, I mean, he fucking serves it to her and she's just like, eh. She's like, how do you keep hitting it? He's like, there's a trick. It's called swing the racket. And she's like, very funny. Go easy on me or whatever. Uh. <laughs> And then, like, three fucking sets later, like, he hits it back and forth, like, three or four times, and then he just, like, whacks it over the fence. Yeah, he finally just gives up, and he's like, fuck off, and says, go fetch the ball, bitch, and then he, like, lays <laughs> then he like lays down on the tennis court yeah. and takes a nap? What the fuck? Meanwhile, Terry's just watching this all go down, and again, I'm like, all right, so Terry's gonna kill them. Nope, just rolls the ball towards fucking this guy's head. And uh, while well, you think something's going to happen, nothing does. And Adrian's just like, I couldn't find the ball. And he's, and Greg holds it up. She's like, huh, where'd that come from? I don't know. That's not suspicious. Uh, I, I tried to fake you out. And then, like, he tries, you know, to fuck her right then and there. And she's like, I got a better idea. Let's go fuck in a well-lit area where people can come in at, at, at their leisure. <laughs> <laughs> the public swimming pool <laughs> on the fucking on the diving, diving board. board. Her ass must have been so raw after that. God, why would you lay on that naked? Man, I don't know, but it is lit up like fucking Yankee Stadium in there. Oh, I know. Like, there's like a 7,000 watt light bulb just illuminating the entire place. And there's big glass windows around the whole thing. Yep. Like, other people live here, man. <laughs> you can't just go fuck in the pool with all the lights on. Well, they do. It's a, it's a, it's an apartment complex full of exhibitionists. Granny Van Dam owns the place. Oh, oh she in there <laughs> getting naked on the diving board. I... The pool is for fucking publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so not only did she run off after her her partner was killed mid coitus, but then she bought this apartment complex in the ten years. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is this also that time period when she worked uh, with Steel? She's a, she's a busy woman. <laughs> It's, it's possible. There's a big fucking sign on the wall. Being naked is encouraged in here. Take them off. She had multiple pokers in the fire, if you will. Fuck all over the place. We're getting busy in the great GVD sauna. There's a sign that says nudity is allowed, but there's an underline under is. <laughs> <laughs> is preferred. Yeah, is, pre- <laughs> is preferred. Is required. And there's an underline under required. It's a big red fucking sign. We, we go between Greg thrusting into Andrea to fucking Maddie on the <laughs> phone, uh, just crying to an operator because she can't get in touch with her fucking fiance. Oh my God, dude. She's trying to find that television hard. And she's like, she's like, ah, oh, put me in touch with my boyfriend. I just need to talk to him. This is an emergency. Don't you understand? You fucking. This is a real emergency. <laughs> It's a real emergency! Ah! Yeah, she's completely lost her fucking mind at this point in the movie. 
this scene, but again, this is one of those scenes that it's like actually fucked. Like, I mean, we're making light of it, but it's like actually fucked up. Like it's really sad. <laughs> yeah, because this woman's good at what she's doing. When you kind of get through context clues, that eventually, like whoever she's on the phone with, this operator just kind of feels bad and is asking her, like, well, who, "Who are we trying to get in touch with?" And she's like, "Huh? Who am I trying to get in touch with?" Who am I trying to call? What do you mean? Who? My boyfriend! I'm trying to get in touch with my boyfriend! This poor operator's been stuck in the same loop of a conversation for 45 minutes. Well, they hang up on her eventually. I know, but there is a scene where she is just mumbling to herself, and there's a a, 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 a dial tone just emanating out of the phone. And it's so it's such like a powerful scene. Like, Jesus Christ, this woman has literally lost all of her marbles. And then Terry fucking slits fucking Ramsey's throat and he falls into the pool and then he fucking backhands Andrea in the face with a machete. Doesn't he walk up and say he quips and then just like, like just slaps. He goes, stop that. He's like, stop doing that. Yeah, and then he just fucking smacks this dude into the pool, and then he kills uh he kills a girl off screen. You don't see it. Yeah, it's, he like slices her cheek and then it cuts. Not her ass cheek, her face cheek. It's one of the few kills that happened off screen, actually. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly. So so Karen and, and Artie are like walking around in the woods and we and they go to that footbridge that Brett was talking or Brad was talking about in the beginning. Yeah, and then this is when Terry uh, proves that he can teleport because he's just he's hiding underneath the bridge like a fucking troll. <laughs> well, I there's a whole r- thrill line for that one, Connor. Yeah. Karen's talking about like she's she's like telling Artie like oh, uh, Terry doesn't love me or whatever, and, like, can you, like, talk to him or something? You're my best friend. And he's like, sure, I'll talk to Terry for you, no problems. Meanwhile, meanwhile, me watching the movie is sitting there thinking, like, man, you just broke this poor guy's heart. Yeah, he's like, didn't you hear what I said? I fucking broke up with my girlfriend because she was whatever on me. She fucking left me. Dude, he's getting all touchy-feely on her, and I feel like... You know, yeah. Terry's, like, testing these fucking people, watching them while they talk to make sure they don't get too yeah. uh, sexual in their conversations. Don't touch my girlfriend I don't I like. I guess. Yeah, don't touch my girlfriend that I won't have sex with unless I have to. Dude, but, like, then then, then when she makes that comment, Art's so just like, yeah, okay, I'll talk to him. And then from below this fucking, like, bridge, <laughs> Terry reaches up and grabs Karen by the ankles, and she freaks the fuck out. And then he he runs around the corner. He's like, oh, I'm just kidding around, man. I'm just joking. It's Todd. It's Todd. No, it's just me, Terry. Don't worry about it. And Artie's like, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> truce, truce. And uh, somehow they... He, like, throws him to the ground and shit. Yeah, yeah. And then basically Terry keeps putting it in everybody's head that, oh, you know, Todd's out there. We need to find uh, the people I just murdered. Uh, Terry, what did you just say? Oh, I mean Greg and Andrea. Forget what I just said. Yeah, you can believe me, trusty Terry. Trusty Terry. <laughs> oh, my God. We get this quick scene where Terry's just like, hey, hey, uh, Audie, go fuck yourself. Bye. And he <laughs> takes Karen and he goes to try to have sex with her. And Audie's like, yeah, whatever, good friend. You're real, you're real romantic or whatever. Because well, he tells him to go look for the other two. Yeah. And then fucking, like, Todd holds Artie at gunpoint in his car. And he's like, come with me. We gotta go get my brother. And he's like, are you fucking Todd? And he's like, yeah, man. Like, come on. Let's go get I'm him. I'm gonna do anything but call the police. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, right? That, basically. And, to, and Todd's just like, get going, mister. And they, like, walk over to fucking, I guess... Where is he fucking Cameron at? Is that in his mom's house? Yeah, he's going to fuck around his mom's house, which I was like, your mom is literally in the next room over, and you're pulling the cushions off this couch that's clearly in the living room. Yeah. Mom's, like, crying through the walls. He's like, hi, Mom. (laughs) Uh Good night, Mom. (laughs) (laughs) To television. So then fucking... uh, Art, like, knocks on the door, and, like, Todd has him at gunpoint, and Terry is like, ah, fuck. He, like, he interrupts Karen and and Terry, and Terry opens the door, he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, your brother's here. And he steps out of the way, and Todd, like, has the gun, and he's like, get your damn hands off for Biff! Except this time he runs away instead? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. He fucking runs right into the woods, and Terry's like, yeah, that's my brother, we have to go get him. Uh, and then him and Artie, like, run after Todd. Back to that bridge, and this is the through line, because Artie finds all these tools on the ground right where Terry grabbed Karen's legs, so, like, obviously Terry was trying to hide that shit, and then they happened to walk up on him, so, fuck, 
there's like a garbage bag like over these tools that he's been killed. What is that saw from? Who was he cutting up with the saw? I the the doctor maybe. Maybe. Now he macheted her. Oh my god. He used a saw? Jesus Christ. I mean he could go in and you know fix up the sloppiness of his work. Stand stand perfectly still while I slowly cut you in half. I'm gonna store all of my murder tools on this bridge and put a fucking black plastic bag over it. That's not what happened. He saw the doctor and he's like, Will you get in this box? I want to see if I can be a magician. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'm um, actually Todd. This is one of my uh quirks. Don't you have that documented, Doc? Uh, I I do. Uh, okay. I love magic. Uh, says it right here. Magician's assistant kink. Get in the box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the well, well, fucking art. He he's bent down looking at this shit. He's like, oh, what is this? A uh, turkey fork? What is this? A carving fork? He hands it to Terry, and Terry's like, oh yeah, looks like that's what it is. Oh, hey Artie, look, I could see Todd right ahead. He's like, oh, where? He's like, right there. He points. Fucking Artie walks like a foot and a half, and and. <laughs> Terry just grabs him by the back of the neck and just plants this thing in Artie's fucking neck. It's so good. I love Murder by Bamboozle. Like, he's just like, he's like, look over there. What? <laughs> the most effective part of this, all, I mean, besides all the blood, is it actually the camera shows Art's feet fucking, like, come together Ooh, in shock. Yeah, no, I, I, it's cool, it's good, but not a fan, because it's just, ugh. It's too real. Oh, man, it's great. It, yeah, he, like, lifted him up off the ground and, like, fucking stuck this thing in his neck. He's like, that's definitely not cranberry sauce, Artie. No, he says that to himself like four times, Well, because, yeah, that's true. I forgot to mention that. When Artie finds all these tools, he picks up the fucking machete covered in yeah. blood, and that's when he drops the line. He's like, yeah, it's not cranberry sauce, Artie. And then <laughs> after he murders this guy, Karen goes looking for them, and he keeps kind of saying to himself while he's looking over the machete, it's not cranberry sauce, Artie. It's not cranberry sauce. It sure isn't. He licks it. He's like, oh, wait, it is. Oh, well, this time it might be, yeah. <laughs> he's just fighting cranberry kaiju out in the fucking woods. <laughs> Literally made out of cranberry sauce. Oh, my God, the fucking wee folk? Sounds like a Power Rangers villain. Yeah, like, the, no- the gnome folk? Fucking cranberry man? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> Carrie comes, and she's like, she's like, ah! Uh, Terry, what's happening? Why are you covered in blood? And he's like, um, I love you. And then takes a swipe <laughs> at her with the fucking machete. And she's like, oh, God, you're the killer. Ah! And she runs away. I like how he's like, all right, there's no need for the facade anymore. Come here. Fuck it. Here we go. Dude, but this is the most bone chilling part of the movie to me. Because Terry is just so casually walking like through this forest and down yeah. the street. Yeah, uh, man. He, he, like kind of like I hate to put it this way but I can't think of a better way to put it but he's like the stereotypical jock like thin yeah. uh, in shape guy very nondescript Bradster and he's just walking covered in blood yeah nice blonde hair that's all blown back not a not a fucking care in the world dude Throw, throwing out one liners as he's walking like oh where are you going Ah, come back with the fucking blood covered machete in his hand she's like oh Karen you're no fun yeah he keeps saying that you're no fun Karen that's his thing I I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into this movie, but I feel like when he had this snap that brought him back to his younger self, I guess, let's say, I feel I feel like he kind of starts acting like a 12-year-old. He took the full advantage of the fact that his brother escaped, and, like, even if Todd didn't show up, he was just going to be like, Todd was here and killed all these people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's his yeah. scapegoat, you know what I mean? So he's like, fuck, yeah, I get to exercise my psychopathic tendencies i also think this is a game to terry like this is this is cat and mouse to him oh for sure it's oh yeah without a doubt this whole sequence is cat and mouse with him and karen i guess i guess the thing i would like to know and it's not really important to the film overall but just like kind of like we were talking about earlier how the mother just kind of treats him like he's still a 12 year old i'm curious if he has that kind of mentality like in general, and people just kind of don't think anything of it, or if this brought him back to that moment in time, and this is why he's kind of throwing off these childish one-liners. I mean, he could be, yeah. Sure, why not? I mean, he's having a grand old fucking time. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, just something to think about. <laughs> this brings me back to that time where I bludgeoned that man having sex. Remember when I fucking whacked that guy in the face with an axe and blamed my brother? Good times. Uh, so, so Karen's, like, trying to get back into the house, uh, his house, and, um... I think he like chases her over somewhere and she like opens a door and yes this is the door from earlier where that guy was having the fucking smoke 
Yes. And somebody's dead inside the door. I forget who. That's him, Jackie. Is that Jackie? Because there's a fucking... Yeah, because it's the same exact location that he fucking met Terry. When he's like, yeah, your brother. He said that you killed everybody. Heh. <laughs> It's, like, behind him in that scene. Yeah, because then there... But there's another dead body, like, in a chair? Well, okay. So so she hides in there, and Terry comes around, and he's looking for her, and he can't get into the uh, the closet. Or he doesn't look. I forget the semantics of it, but he walks off. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, you're right. She sees Jackie's body strung up, and she comes out, and then... Oh, my God. This this part fucking killed me. Oh, dude. He's got, he's got fucking Artie, who he just killed... Strung up like Bernie Lomax as a fucking puppet. <laughs> Very much like Bernie Lomax. But, dude, here's the difference. Here's the fucking difference. Obviously, comedy and horror are two different things to begin with. But, like, what, everything they did with Bernie Lomax in that movie is played up for comedy and it works. Here, it is just, again, this guy showing how out of touch, how playful he's being, how deranged he is because he's moving this guy's fucking arms like, hey, hey, Karen. And then she runs off. He fucking fingers Karen's ass with the dude's hand, and she's like, ah! And and then he starts fucking taking the hands and, like, clapping them together. It's fucked up, man. And he's like, he's like, ah, you know, fun. He's like, come on, Karen, have a laugh. Like, it's like Killface having his arm up that fucking cinem- the, the videographer. <laughs> oh, now it's really funny. It's like on that level of fucked up. <laughs> that's gr- You can call them when you hit the ground. <laughs> that's my brother! Yeah, that's my brother. Um, Terry wants his face on every television. She she runs fucking apartment apartment. She goes and uh, she knocks on that little girl's door from earlier. <laughs> she said, that man told me not to let anybody in. They want to hurt my kitty. Yeah, she goes, you're going to hurt my kitty. Fuck off. Pretty smart little girl, honestly. Then she breaks into she breaks into the fucking apartment that Andrew was babysitting for earlier, and we know what happened to those people. Sure do. Oh, and Terry's just there, right? Yeah, the... The, the, there gives you a little credence of his teleportation powers there, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> see? He's got that Voorhees special, dude. He's standing there over the woman because you didn't see what happened to her earlier. And uh, he's got he, he's got the machete. I guess he must have just, you know, killed her earlier. But now he's, like, reinserting it into a wound and pulling it out of, like, it, like, towards her breast. He stabbed this woman through the heart with a machete. And then, like is unsheathing it from this dead body. Yeah. It's it's pretty brutal. There's a close-up of the effect, and when the machete comes out, it goes like, like <laughs> yeah, it makes a sound. Oh, it sure does. So she uh, she goes and hides in a different room. Does, does a piss-poor job, mind you, but she tries calling the cops. She, she hides behind a fucking a dresser? Like, what? She doesn't even turn the lights off. She just ducks down. She's in the room with the kid and, like, goes to the side of a dresser, and she's, like, dialing. Like, you can clearly see it from the top and the side. Like, you can't fit your body behind it, right? And she's, like, dialing. Uh, well, she dials zero to, like, get in touch with the cops or 911 or whatever. And Terry comes in, and he's like, hey, hey, hey did you wait? the baby and he like walks over and she fucking whacks this dude in the dick with a phone yeah she does <laughs> and he he screams as if yeah. that happened in reality <laughs> yeah oh might have low budget film here improv <laughs> you hit me in the dick with a phone she's like yeah i thought it was a good look for the scene <laughs> she picks the baby up and runs with a ball of cloth down the street while this thing screams its fucking head off. It is, it, like, because the way she's running and, like, the movement of the, the alleged baby, you're like, there's nothing in there. I mean, it looks more realistic than Rumpelstiltskin when they were carrying around Baby John. That thing looked like a fucking football most of the time. <laughs> it's true. It might as well have been a football half the time. If it was Baby Bink, it'd be a lot better because then Rick Baker would be doing the baby effects. Baby Bink would have taken Terry out already. Hey, Vern Troyer could have gotten another paycheck, R.I.P. <laughs> Imagine this woman carrying around Vern Troyer in a fucking, like, swaddled Vern Troyer. Just kicking his feet going, hey, hey, lady, hey. If this was, uh, if this was Baby Bink, Karen would have just put him down and just, like, let him do what he does. And he would have somehow, like, you know, Rube Goldberg deviced murdered Terry with something. <laughs> Terry would be like, you have a Bink? Ah! He, he lures him into the same construction site and kills him. That music just comes in. do 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 <laughs> and, and fucking Karen's like looking around like where's that music coming from the baby's like wandering off waving and then and then Mario and Luigi drive by <laughs> <laughs> there's a leak at the Scapelli's at the, at the shadow forest the music like Doppler effects in and out so just 
what is this? The end oh. of Twin Peaks Return when fucking Kyle <laughs> McLaughlin is standing there, like unsure of what reality he's in. <laughs> Pretty much. We're merging. Oh God! Now we really are. Um. So then, so she ends up at the swimming pool, and she takes this motherfucking baby. Well, uh, okay, hold on. First of all, she's at the swimming pool and she's trying to comfort the baby, and and Terry comes in and he's like. He's hopping on the diving board to freak her out. Oh, yeah, he's having a great time. So she runs off, and she goes in the bathroom, and she shoves this baby under a sink. But this baby's foot's still sticking out. <laughs> Here, you'll be fine. And she goes, and she she goes to go into the sauna or some shit to hide, and that's where you find Andrea and Greg's mutilated bodies. So she, uh, she goes in the bathroom stall instead and kind of locks the door and hides. I love this part because he like strolls in all nonchalant and he like he like knocks on the sauna door. He's like, hey, you guys are right in there. And he fucking opens it up. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> and he like closes it. <laughs> and then he goes and like, I'll leave you two love birds alone. Yeah. And then he like goes and takes a piss. Yeah. And then he goes and takes a piss and then leaves. I mean, he has all the time in the world. He sure does. Don't we cut right? We we cut back real quick to um, Maddie. Yeah, because she's going through the the fridge one last time. Just finish off those leftovers from a few hours ago, and she throws like a turkey leg or some shit in the trash, and she stops and does a double take because she found the properly hidden shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, we she she fucking pulls out Terry's bloody shirt and has an epiphany, and decide after all of that phone calling and nonsense she decides to go over to brett's house finally or brett brad's house down the street yeah a minute and a half away what the f- why the fuck didn't she just go in there before if she was feeling upset like i don't get it she's having a mental breakdown i guess this is true i mean and it works for the movie because those scenes are are pretty powerful so she runs her ass down there and she's banging on the door and she's like brad brad Todd's crazy. He's back. He's killing people. But our perspective is of Brad in his chair with his one severed hand and his fist propping his head up, and he's just fucking yeah. dead motionless. <laughs> she fucking pulls this sliding door open and goes to touch him, and he falls forward, and his head smacks the desk and splits in half. God, that was so good, and I wasn't ready for it's, it. It's glorious. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't remember how this goes down, so someone just tell me. But at some point during all this, she kind of starts to come to the conclusion that, oh, fuck, maybe maybe I'm the only one that can do anything about this. And she goes into, what does she go to her car or her drawer or some she, shit? N- not even. She's like, this has got to end. And she, like, goes into Brett's debt or shit. She's like, this has got to end. And she goes into Brad's desk and, like, takes out his revolver. Right, yeah, because in a previous scene, before Terry kills him, he had taken it out and kind of looked at the bullets in the chamber. And then uh, you cut back to the swimming pool uh, while this is all going down, and Todd's kind of caught up. And uh, Terry, he, he's he got uh, he's got Karen cornered. Uh, well, Todd, Todd's there, and Karen like runs over to Todd, and Todd has the fucking gun pointed at Terry. And he's like, go ahead, fucking shoot me, asshole. And... Uh, Or he's like, you can't do it. And then fucking Karen takes the gun (laughs) and she's pointing at him. She's like, don't come any closer. I'm going to fucking shoot you. And then uh, what we were talking about before pays off because she pulls the trigger. and there's No, yeah, no bullets. Dude, she fires at like two or three times at this guy too and nothing. So he kind of lunges at them. He throws her against the wall and then like he like, he like locks up with fucking Terry and they fall <laughs> well, into the pool. Well, no, it, Terry grabs Todd by the seat of his fucking pants after punching him in the stomach and just throws him in the pool. <laughs> well, also, the whole reason they start actually getting into it, let's back that up a second, is that Terry's basically going on about how no one's going to believe Todd and, you know, it's his time to take, you know, take the blame, Todd. That's right. And he, yeah. uh, he like wipes blood on his face and like puts the machete in his hands and Todd's like, no! And he throws the machete down. I, I love I love the the wiping the blood in his face was so fucking cool. He's like, here we go again. Just be a good little boy. And then and then yeah, they tumble into the pool and are beating the shit out of each other, or trying to. Really, it looks like Todd's just getting destroyed. There's only so much you can do while you're fighting in the water, except for try to drown the other person. Especially the way you're shooting it, because we're not going into the like we're not going we're not putting the camera into the pool because that's expensive. Also, there's it's one actor who's playing these characters, so you have to have a double in there, and you can't show both yeah. their faces. 
so it's like some close up shots, some wide shot, it, and a lot of wide shots too to like not be too close to them, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we get this great shot as they're all getting out of the pool. Karen's trying to get Todd, and and Terry just kind of Terry gets out on his own volition. But as the camera pans up to the left, you see in the doorway Maddie's standing there in her robe. And she starts kind of walking towards Karen and Todd. You're not really sure what she's going to do because she's been so anti-Todd the whole fucking movie. But here's the thing with this scene, right? Uh, Karen is like, Todd, Todd, give me your hand, Todd, Todd. Like, it's very clear that that is Todd in the pool and Terry is across the way with the machete standing at the other end. Right. But I think she is so laser focused on, I need to end this, I need to do this. Because, you know, as far as she's concerned... Uh, you know, Todd killed Brad. You know, she doesn't know. She's just right. assuming it's it's Todd who escaped. So she sees... Right. And they're twins, and he's holding machete, maybe. She's like, the first blonde-haired son I see is getting shot. <laughs> well, that too, but you gotta also <laughs> think their hair's both wet. So, like, yeah, us as the audience obviously can tell the difference, but her as in this fragile state just sees... Uh, I was thinking the same thing, One yeah. of her sons with a machete. <laughs> one of them... One of them needed a mustache. <laughs> A mole. <laughs> He's the evil one. Shoot him. They let Ty grow that in the mental asylum. <laughs> Shoot the one with the birthmark on his eye. I was told this would save me, but now my brother's dead. Ah <laughs> oh, man, you know what we should have done? We should have put them each in a fucking suit, except one of them's in the cheap one they got from the <laughs> casino, but they look exactly the same. But you can only see it on the inside. We cloned him from a pancreas. Yeah, unfortunately, they didn't have a Randy Quaid robot there to shoot, so they couldn't pull that scene off. To be fair, they are not wearing the same thing whatsoever. No. No, not even remotely close. Uh, I mean, Todd has like a blue striped shirt on that very vaguely resembles the shirt that Terry had on in the beginning, but beyond that... Maybe, but that's... yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm reaching for straws with that comparison. I'm just saying that's the only thing I can even remotely compare. Um, but yeah, so she comes in with this gun that she got from Brad... And uh, Terry's kind of just like, yeah, okay, yeah, what are you going to do? Just standing there waiting for something to happen. And she just starts on. Hi, Mom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Starts unloading on him. She fucking shoots him in the gut and then shoots him in the eye? Yeah. And then shoots him two or three more times. uh, And he falls into the water. And the way it's filmed is, like, he hits the water and all you see is just, like, like, there's a vague shot of something under the surface of the water. But there's so much fucking blood. It looks like Terry dissolved. Oh, yeah. He's secretly, like, of the uh, Wicked Witch clan. (laughs) He could be. It's possible. The whole family is, but, uh, you know, Todd got all his father's genes, and, uh, eh, you know, this reference kind of falls apart since they were just wrestling in a pool. I'm just going to leave it with that. (laughs) Well, there has to be an, there has to be a wound, and then uh, all bets are off. Um, so so mommy overkills Terry. Um, he falls in the pool dead, and then uh, she kind of collapses, and Todd crawls up on her. And this is where we get more of that uncomfortable closeness. Yeah, stop it, man. They they look like they look like they're about to make out with each other. They do. <laughs> They look like it or they actually do? Is that what you're trying to say there? Oh, no, they do look like it. Yeah, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, they do look like it. (laughs) I think if they actually did, we'd all all have the same reaction to it. Oh, God, no. So so while this is happening, while they're cuddling, let's say, uh, Karen goes back where she left this baby precariously shoved under a Kleenex bottle, (laughs) uh, pulls it out. the The kid's drinking bleach underneath the fucking sink. You left me unsupervised. <laughs> Ew. Well, she carries it back out, dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then watching her have this crazy mental breakdown uh, where she's, like, cradling Todd, and she's just like, oh, my boy, oh, we can finally be together again. Like, we don't need anybody, just you and me, and we're fine. And you're the bestest of the best. It's just us, Terry. Todd's gone. It's just us. And then, f- oh, this man. is where this movie went from like an eight to a ten for me. Um, yeah, because like I like horror movies, especially in this time period, that have downer endings. But like, holy shit, this is a fucking bummer, and it's really, really good. Before we go to the the final piece, like it's already bad enough that she thinks she's killed Todd, and 
th- and that she believes this is Terry, right? So just put that in perspective. This poor motherfuck, right? So, like, Todd is like, no, I'm Todd. Like, I'm Todd. And she's like, I'm Todd. And, like, now at this point, like, she has just, the roller coaster of, ins- of sanity has veered off the tracks, and she's completely lost her fucking mind. Um, They're, like, chanting in unison. Like, he's banging his head against the wall saying, I'm Todd, and she's screaming, I'm Todd. And then she fucking puts the gun to her head and blows her brains out in front of the pool. And then Todd looks over, horrified, and then credits. While Karen gets the fuck out of there. Yeah, Karen's like, fuck this. (laughs) Karen runs away, and then the fucking sirens hit. And I'm thinking to myself, like, great. Unless Karen backs him up. He's fucked. They're gonna put him away. He's. They're gonna put him away. They didn't check for evidence last time. They sure as fucking gonna check this time. No, man. It's like, oh, well, everybody's dead, and he's the twin, and he's the only one alive, so uh, he's crazy. Yeah, but, but, officer, my mother shot herself in the head, and my, my brother, his fingerprints must be all over these other bodies. Well, you know, Todd, you're crazy. We're not taking your word for anything. Throw him in the uh, jail cell, throw away the key. Don't want to see this guy ever again. Hey, Todd, leave the police work to us, okay? We're experts. Gissing's there. He's like, he's like, oh, it was a revenge killing. Yeah, it's a dual fucking uh, crime scene. It's Gissing and fucking Kaminsky working together. Now you know you're in trouble. Oh, it looks like they just killed every. He killed everybody. Where's my Zagnut? Yeah, that's it. That's a case. Everybody go home. Case closed. Fuck off. Play the music. And we go right to credits, and there's no there's no real closure there, and I think it just ends on such like a downer, but it's so good. The ending is the home run for me because um, it's very rarely do I feel like slasher movies in this time period are trying to say anything. I'm not saying this movie has this like deep fucking message to it, but they chose to take the ending and use it as a stage. Yeah, they chose to use the ending as a stage for this woman's fucking completely cracked psyche. Oh, I think so. Um, and gave you something to really fucking remember for this movie outside of the gore and music and stuff. Well, and that's that's kind of why I make the heredity, heredity comparison. Obviously, that movie is way more recent. But, uh, you know, without getting into plot, you know, the idea of just, you know, obviously heredity isn't just about this woman having a mental breakdown. There's so many other fucked up things that happen in that film. But that at the end of the day, it kind of is about this woman having a mental breakdown. Right. Well, that's what that's what I was getting at before. Like on the surface. Yeah, this is, you know, when you when you see this film or people talk about this film, they're like, oh, it's a great Thanksgiving slasher movie. But they never really talk about their proverbial meat and potatoes of the film. And like this is the backbone that it sits on. And that's why I think this really not only it not only does it does it make it work, but like that's what makes this film great because there's actual stakes, there's actual turmoil and 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 fucked up uh it's it's also fairly realistic, I would say, outside of maybe a, a few minor things, and it's still a, you know it's still a movie. I think um, so. But I, 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 yeah. But I could, I could kind of see everything happening the way it did, just because I feel like all these characters, even though some of them are a little one note, it's very realistic the way that these people would act. I mean, you can look for real life cases where that level of denial from a parent is very present, or friends being oblivious to what's really going on. Because that's my whole thing with that. You know, how, how, why would they know any different? This guy's been telling them for fucking ten years his brother's crazy and is in an asylum for killing a guy. Yeah. I'm right. And it's one of those things too with like like the favoritism to me like hit home and how that can just blind uh a parent to whatever it may be between two siblings and in this case they they're identical twins. So, uh there's really no other deciding factors except for their their names and I guess, you know, their personalities, but uh to to go and favor that one that one twin and completely disown the other one is kind of wacky to me. And even from like a uh, a, 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 a physical uh, standpoint, meaning like the physical attribute wise, like how you separate the two in your head, even though they look exactly the same. You don't, do you see what I'm getting yeah, at yeah, here? Yeah, Rather yeah. than have like a brother and a sister, it's like two brothers who are twins. You know what well, I mean? Well, it's almost like, you know, it's not a direct comparison, but we were talking about it briefly earlier, like Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. Like, and, oh, perfect. People always talk about, well, that ending. And it's like, okay, first of all, I don't know how well that he- that ending holds up in 2019. But second of all, that's not really the point they're trying to make. It's not like, oh my God, it's a, he's a, Angela's a dude. Spoilers to a 
forty year old movie. Right. Yeah. The context behind that is what's important. Is that like, like one kid dies in a boating accident, so the woman's like, "No, you're the you're, you're my child that died, and that's your identity from this point." He on. goes to live with his aunt, and she's like, "I always wanted a daughter. It's a shame your sister died, but you're gonna be my daughter." And the ca- the kid is shell shocked like Todd is, and just kind of goes along with it, and then you get sleepaway camp. Um, Right, you're you're using you're using a um, exactly. a mentally scarred child and manipulating and and manipulating them to 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 be the way you want them to be. And I even think that uh, 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 Maddie did that to Todd. Yeah, in oh, the yeah. terms of like, it's okay that you killed that person. Don't worry about it. Even though he's told her countless times that it wasn't him, you know. And and that that's what's so great about the end of this film is like she still doesn't believe that it was. That it was Terry and not Todd, you know? Blind faith. She killed her actual murderous son, and she's still like, nope, I killed Todd, and that's it. Everything's better yep. now. Because Todd's the bad one. But yeah, that was a great that was a great reference to Sleepaway Camp, because I feel like everybody forgets those parts of that movie, and they're like, oh, she's got a dick, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and it's like, but there's a reason for it. I also feel like Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3, while I do enjoy those movies for what they are, they are definitely more comedy-based and I think people kind of like look at those in reference sure. to that series as a whole, and it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. But that's maybe an argument for a different time. Yeah, that series is a tonal disaster. I agree. And it's one of those things where, just like I said, I mean, people see the end of that film, and they're like, this is stupid and hokey. And it's like, actually, it's fucking bone chilling. Um, a bone chilling, disturbing, it's fucking- uh, <laughs> horrifying, really, um, much like this movie. It, it, just like this movie. Um, yeah, it's really fucked up. Yeah. Um, so, um, what is this uh, food on our Thanksgiving spread, fellas? Because we're doing the thanks garbage to uh, for for this episode. I got this. This is a giant fucking pile of cheesy, buttery mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Just like fucking like, don't make it healthy. Just please, like, make it an artery clogging fucking just goop. Um, I love this. This is everything I like about slasher movies. Um, it has fun kills. Uh, has lots of over the top violence. And sometimes it's funny, and unexpectedly, it was kind of jarring in some places. Uh, with the the arc between the mother and her two kids, I had never seen this before. I'd never heard of it until we decided to watch it. Um, and it definitely took me back to the days of ninety nine cent rentals, my local video store, where you just walk in and grab you know ten films, and you go home and watch all of them over weekend. Uh, and it reminded me of movies that informed my taste in horror, and I really appreciated all of it. Um, and when I like something this much, I tend to not have much else to say about it. So, yeah, th- there it is. It's a giant, buttery, just fucking, just four different kinds of cheese. Probably a little garlic salt in there, too. Mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, I'm going to have to make some of that <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, fucking... Uh, Julie's downstairs right now making fucking gar- gar- red skin garlic mashed potatoes, baby. <laughs> Julie! <laughs> Emergency potatoes! Just mail that on over here. I'm sure it'll hold up in the uh, post office. I don't know if it'll travel too well. You're going to have a soggy package when it gets there. Um, <laughs> um, this movie is a big old slice of pumpkin pie for me. Like homemade pumpkin pie. Mm. With, with a fucking mountain of whipped cream on top. Oh, man, I will fucking lick it right off that fucking wall. Me and Cyborg Man are going to eat it off the floor. Uh, that's how good it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to, you know, whenever we, we, usually unanimously when we like something, we always usually piggyback off each other and have equal amounts of nice things to say about it, right? Um, so I'm going to do that <laughs> again because fuck it. But, like... It's. I watch this every year. I'm and it, and again, this is another film that I'm glad I got to share with you guys that you hadn't experienced. We were gonna do this last year, but we did Home Sweet Home instead. Um, so I'm glad we saved this to kind of break in that tradition with something else besides this, and kind of and kind of save this as 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 the dessert, as our proverb, my proverbial uh, pumpkin pie. Yeah. Um, it's sweet. It's kind of bad for you, um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because it makes you feel so good. And, um, you know, this movie has everything you could possibly want in a slasher. It, ha- it it delivers the goods on gore. It's not 
corny to the point where you're like, oh my god, get to the next kill already. The I, it, the story is compelling, like really compelling, especially uh, like we had you know like we had already mentioned between the between the mother and the two sons and that and that whole uh, you know dynamic there. Um, and that fucking ending, dude. Like, y- I remember the first time I saw this, my fucking jaw was on the ground. I was like, "That's how this ends." I was like, "This is brilliant. This is fucking amazing." Like, you think you're gonna come out? It, it, this is this is the movie that you know kind of has its cake and eat it. It has its cake and it eats it too because it has its final girl, but it also has its completely bleak ending. Right? So Karen survives as your quote unquote final girl, but yet it still has a terrible ending for our main uh protagonist, right? Yeah. Um so you kind of get a little bit of both you get the best of both worlds there and, and how that kind of pans out. So so yeah man, uh I, I love this movie. Pumpkin pie, fucking shovel it in my face, baby. I'm gonna have to you know also go with uh, Joe and Connor just picking like one of my most uh, absolute favorite things for Thanksgiving. This is uh, you know you know some people they're, they're candy yams. Some people put mashed potato, or some people's candy yams, they put marshmallows on them. Some people put cinnamon. And some people do both. This movie does both. So. <laughs> and some pecans on there, some walnuts or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, it, it goes all out. It hits all the fucking bases, checks all the marks. And, uh. Yeah, yeah. Loaded sweet potatoes. That's what I'm eating t- tonight with uh, Blood Rage, a little glass of milk on the side. Um. I don't know. Yeah, again, I don't know what else I can really add. The effects are fucking mind-boggling. Um, you know, I guess I, you know, I'd have to watch other movies at the time, you know, around this to kind of gauge. But I, I don't know. I don't think I've seen too many movies from the early '80s that go this all out. Uh, this realistically, I guess I should say, because obviously, you know, you have stuff like The Evil Dead and Sleepaway Camp, like we talked about, and, and you know, obviously all the Friday movies and you know everything else that was coming out around then, and. Uh, I don't know. This is. I, I mean, I'm sure if I go back and watch those movies, they're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about this super gory thing and this super gory thing." But this movie, it kind of just like it, it, it uh, hit that sweet spot, let's say, with the uh, the candy DMs reference I'm going with. Um, super good gore, interesting story. Like Joe and Connor were talking about, a story about you know that I wasn't anticipating with the mother's mental breakdown and the way her kids kind of also suffer their own individual mental breakdowns over the course of several years. In in Todd's case, um, really good flick. Uh, I I guess if you were gonna put anything else on the potatoes, maybe it's just a dollop of whipped cream if you're really feeling fat that night. Uh, and that, that would be the Thanksgiving portion of this, you know, not only is it candy yams, but it's candy yams with a little bit of Thanksgiving whipped cream, homemade. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's fucking great film. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Our collective Thanksgiving meals here, or at least like portions would fucking stop someone's heart. (laughs) Oh yeah, man. Yeah. 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 And I mean, honestly, like. My pumpkin pie is probably planes, trains, and automobiles, Joe. But uh, it's you know it's right there. It's gonna be you know from from this year on in my household, it's gonna be uh, blood rage and planes, trains, and automobiles. I'm, you know I can't I can't do home sweet home. What a what a contrast. <laughs> I gotta look up the clip version of that on YouTube. That film has too much in there that I just am not into. But yeah. there's, there's you know body by Jake, body slamming people uh, under the hood of a car. I can get into Home Sweet Home isn't a great film, but it's one of those grail tapes that I own. And yeah, no, for sure. I'm happy that I own it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I think I think Home Sweet Home comes off as far funnier than it ever intended to be because you have. Like this large fucking, you know, looks like a shrunk wrap onto the giant running around laughing like, yeah, 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 yeah. and you just like fucking body slamming people. It's fucking funny. Yeah. And there's a kid named Mistake. Like, <laughs> yeah. But not only is is Blood Rage also like a semi grail tape that I own, but like it's actually a good fucking movie too. You know what I mean? So it's a double bonus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so much better than Home Sweet Home too. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, so we're doing thanks, gar- you know, this is our thanks garbage episode, and, um, we want to, you know, last year we, we wanted to kind of say what we were thankful for, and, um, you know, uh, I want to kind of open that discussion up with, um, just giving some shout outs to some people. I mean, this is something we never, we have never done before, because we, 
haven't really had a fan base and it's it's been growing substantially um this past year um especially with season one and season two coming out um and I just want to say thank you guys uh to for listening and supporting us and and saying all the nice things that you do and 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 making memes and sharing our posts and 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 weighing in on on movies and stuff like that you know we we love engaging with you guys and um i just i also just want to say real quick um uh congratulations to all the winners of 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 the the trick or trash contest we had last month it went super well there was a ton of people who entered um but unfortunately, you know, the, we only had four winners, right? So uh, let me just pull them up real quick. So I just want to I want to say uh, thank you to Rico Brendan ninety two and Good Enough Apollo and X Mortis two thousand one and the Dalter. Um, I didn't know if you guys wanted me to use your real names or not, but those are their handles on Instagram. And we also got some sweet um, e- emails. Uh, people went on our website. <laughs> and filled out, uh, you know, they, they emailed us and, and wrote in some really, really sweet stuff uh, with suggestions and just what they like about the show. And, and you know, it, they like listening to us and it helps them through their day and what have you. And it was just it just made us feel really good. And I want to thank um, Luke. He didn't give an, a last name. So I'm going to say Luke and uh, Daniel Gonzalez. Uh, thanks. Um, you really um, you made our days. And, it, and we're glad that. uh we can hang out and talk about movies and, and you guys listen and enjoy them as much as we do. And, and you're having fun doing it. Um, and I guess uh, as far as go- doing the individual, individual, what we're thankful for, I guess I'll go first. Um, again, like I said last year, I'm just thankful that I have I can make the time every week to get together with two of my best friends and talk about films that we really like and sometimes not like but uh it's always a good time and and we've <laughs> kind of built this crazy uh you know MDU our our movie dumpster universe and and and, it, and it's just crazy how much it plays a part in like my everyday life and like just how it kind of connects everything because everything is connected guys <laughs> and that's just that's that's how the joke started everybody it was just to riff on marvel <laughs> Yeah, everything's connected, baby. Um, even before Marvel, I would always fuck around with shit like that. Like, yeah, Chud is the prequel to Home Alone, and <laughs> Flesh Burns the prequel to Predator, and shit like that. Um, but yeah, you know, I couldn't. I, I really can't ask for more, and I'm I'm thankful that uh, you guys are enjoying the show, and I'm thankful for Connor and Sean and being able to get together and their hard work that they put in, uh, along with myself to, to give you guys this show. And, um, you know, here's to, here's to, you know, the rest of this year and next year. (laughs) So to be kind of general and then I'll get into specifics. Um, I'm very thankful for this year of the show altogether so far, because I feel like if it, in a few years, I feel like we're going to look back on 2019 as a very formative year for us. I um, feel like we hit our stride uh, content-wise, and then seemingly just in small spurts throughout the year, like we noticed we were getting a lot more attention. Um, the interaction started getting up, uh, like the engagement was growing, and then some of you started to kind of make your presence felt. Like I said, where some of you, we started noticing you guys way more. Um, as time went on, and some of you even personally reached out to me when I was having a bad time a few weeks ago, so I thank you for that. Um, uh, this year's produced some of my favorite episodes. Uh, I'm really excited about that Terminator Salvation episode. Uh, Lawnmower Man's one of my favorite episodes. Um, I think this year was really, really successful for us, and I feel like going forward, everything's just going to get better and better and better. So, um, thanks to everyone who interacted with us, like like Joe just said. Um, that's one of the, my favorite things to do during the day is find someone to chit chat with in the movie dumpster, Instagram or Facebook, whatever the fuck. Um, I really like it; it makes my heart sing. So, thank you, everybody, and that's that's it. Um, I I want to just kind of go off of what Joe and Connor were saying. Um, I, w- I want to thank uh, everyone for listening to the show, obviously. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. Like a year ago when we were doing this show, when we did do Home Sweet Home, 
you know, we, we were talking about John Hurt and we were talking about, you know, just the experience of working on the show. But like we've come a long way. Like John Hurt is still uh, felt throughout the MDU on a continual basis. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we had these crazy characters like Daniel Baldwin really make their fucking presence felt this year. Uh, dolphin diving all over the place. We had Granny, we had Granny yep. Van Dam co- come out of an episode <laughs> that personally, just a little behind the scenes, bleeders that I wasn't totally sure about going into because, you know, that movie is so weird. And uh, we came out of it with, I personally think, our best uh, yep. character so far. We, we've got Gunnar Henson the White. We've got Charnetsky the Brown. Uh and all and all the rest from season one, the hug a bunch are in there still. <laughs> uh, you know, Steve Irwin's still fucking crawling around somewhere. But uh, we, we, like Joe said, we have this little MDU family. Uh, you know, six degrees of John Hurt uh, going on. And uh, I don't know. I just I'm I'm looking to forward to see what we uh, ha- you know what I don't even what I'm not even thinking about that might come up in uh, our December month before we finish out this season and then everything that. Uh, God, I, I couldn't tell you what we're going to come up with for season three, but uh, I'm sure it'll be great. Um, I also want to do some more personal shout outs to uh, first up to, you know, guys like Rudy and Aaron from O Street Mini Golf. Uh, we played a game with them earlier in the year, and then we went on uh, Confection Nerds with Mikey and Rudy hosting against the Far Point Toys guys, uh, Justin and Penelope, earlier in the year. Little game mm-hmm. show on uh, Mikey's Con- Confection Nerds' uh, Twitch channel. So uh, thank you to them, bringing us out there, having a little fun, getting to know some more people, some more fans of the show and in the community that we're trying to build up here. And anybody else that's reached out to us, you know, sometimes we don't always respond to emails. And uh, sometimes that's because we just don't have the time or because, um, you know, people suggest movies sometimes. And we'll talk about it, uh, you know, in our in our chat or, or over the phone with each other. And it's like, uh, like, we, we, you know, Joe was talking about a couple people that sent emails in. And one that, that really caught my eye, but we were already doing Blood Rage this year, was this movie called Dutch with Ed O'Neill. And it's basically from what the guy was saying is uh, it's essentially planes, trains, and automobiles with Ed O'Neill and this fucking rich, stuck-up British kid uh, going across the country, and this wacky shit happens to him. And, and this is a fucking movie I would have never heard of in my wildest dreams if not for doing this show. And uh, there's been plenty of movies like that we've done that Joe or Connor brought to my attention, or even stuff that I've just like... Oh, this trailer looks pretty good. This might make a good episode, and we do it, and it is. So, uh, you know, I'm starting to ramble a little bit here, but I guess, I, I, I don't know, I guess everything I just said I'm really thankful for. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess I guess for, for, for fear of repeating myself, I'll end it there, but... Uh, I, I, have, I have one more thing that I forgot to say that I made, I told myself I was going to say. Do you have anything else? I was going to say... One more thing, too, just to, an addendum to that, thanking all the people that we've uh, met and worked with so far this year. Uh, Dave DeForn, C.B. Smith. Um, Jake Freeman, Protector 101. He does our he does, he does does all of our music. Yep. Arlen Haro for coming on. Um, do we have any more guests this year? We had Matt Curione on. Matt Curione. Always welcome back every Halloween. I think, like we said, we're going to try to make that a tradition, if not have them on more. And I think that's also something maybe uh, you might want to look out more for next season is maybe having some more guests on. We were talking a little bit about some more possibly themed episodes down the road. Uh, not announcing anything officially because it's still super early and uh, we're, st- we're spitballing. And uh, we, we, we like, like Joe said, send us emails, comment on anything we post on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and let us know what you think or... You know, suggest shit. You know, we're open to anything. There's very few ideas that are thrown our way that we're going to say, ah, ah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we take everything into consideration. And if it's fun to talk about, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, you know, and we and we kind of have a cue going. Um, and also get ready uh, before Connor, Connor's final thought. Uh, get ready for next month because Trashing Through the Snow is coming back and we are holding another contest uh, throughout uh, the month of December for that too. And we got some fucking doozies for you. We're going to have a blast. Um, and, uh, and yeah. Uh, so real quick, one more thanks. And then, um, something coming up that I would like to plug. Um, thank you to the people behind dark forest for providing for me (laughs) this year, a moment that I will never, ever, ever, ever forget, which is seeing something salty. I said, 
pop it up in a movie trailer. I don't care what trailer it was. Something I said is now in someone's <laughs> marketing material. <laughs> because those dudes are such fucking good sports after we pissed all over their film that they lovingly thanked us, tagged us, plugged us, and just were so positive about it that I can't help but feel like, like I don't know, I just owe them a bit of gratitude because that was such a surreal moment that I got to show it to all my, all my co-workers, and then they wanted to watch the movie afterwards. Well, I hope they um, didn't. And I was like, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe you should reconsider that, I'm kidding. Um, it did its job. But, um, yeah, it was completely surreal, and it's something I'm never going to forget. Um, and to plug something, um, so... Coming up on Phantom Zone, we are going to be covering uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, crossover event, and it's going to be the last big thing we ever do for covering TV because we're fucking sick of it. Um, but this event has snowballed into something that's, like, it's rivaling what big screen DC is doing at this point in terms of scope and ambition, and it's going to have multiple Supermans in it. Uh, Kevin Conroy is going to be fucking Batman. Uh, the original Flash actor's coming back. Linda Carter's showing up for some reason. Um... And it's starting on December 8th, and we're going to be covering uh, every episode, which is starting December 8th, running into January, and um, I'm going to try to get guests and kind of make a big deal out of it, so uh, please look out for that. And that's uh, that. That's the Phantom Zone podcast, in case anyone's not sure. And I'm looking forward to it. My ass fucking better be on something. I don't give a fuck what it is. Well, once we start planning things better, we'll... I don't want to hear that excuse anymore. <laughs> get your shit together. We could do it, you could do it, she can do it, I can do it. We're doing it. Yeah. So that's it. That's Blood Rage from 1987, directed by John Grismer. Hey, everybody, if you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us anywhere you listen to your podcast, and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster, and happy Thanksgiving, dumpster dwellers. That isn't cranberry sauce, Artie. That is not cranberry sauce.